Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. It's how they run, homie. Look what I become. I'm the I'm the one. Vinny? Yeah. What Let's what go. area code is 343? Is there an area code 343 or no? 343? I don't know an area code. I don't know about that. I'm going to check. Well, today's episode is 343. Uh, Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada. Where, what is that? Canada. Ontario, Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada. No, we're American. We have Canada. nothing to do with Ontario, Canada, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> not. Uh, uh, our guest today he gets shy when the camera's on. So <laughs> something happens with the camera, and he even expresses this is he his almost first time. Almost he almost left. He walked in was like, I don't know. Yeah. Super it, camera shy. Kobe, know. Chaos, Cummington. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he's, uh, he's got a lot of different personalities, man. You see him fighting, calling people out. Getting a lot of people pissed off. We'll cover some of that stuff. But if there's one thing you know, you know who he is in the UFC world. Kobe Cummington, it's great to have you on, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. What an honor. It's, it's great to have you here. I, you know, I think one thing most people don't know, and I don't know if you kind of like hide it from people that you don't want people to know, is your level of loyalty and admiration for President Joe Biden. Have you always, <laughs> has it always been a, you know, like a private thing? Because I know obviously you're wearing this, this, this hat called Make America Great Again. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about President Joe Biden? Oh, man, I... I think he's senile. I don't think that he's still there. He can't even ride a bike anymore. So, you know, the guy has nothing there. I think that even his handlers are just feeding him too many drugs just to keep him alive every day. It's, <laughs> it's, it's sad to see, you know, they're holding him like a little puppet. So, you know, you see a guy like President Trump, you know, he, he was at my fight in Vegas. He was at Reno the next day. He was at Iowa the day before. And then he was speaking at New Hampshire the next day. The guy's got so much energy, like, that's what we need in office right now is a guy like President Trump who has the energy to to go all day and not get tired for our country. And, and it's so tough to understand a driver like him. Like it's constant going, 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 yeah. going. And today, I, I'm sure you saw. We'll get into the stuff with him. Colorado, he can't compete, and yeah. you know what they're trying to do you know, with him, with him not being able to run. By the way, did you guys see what DeSantis when he was asked the same question no. what he said? Oh, oh, but but well, can you pull that up about Colorado when Vivek said oh, I'm going to take my stuff? Yeah. He says I'm not. Maybe find that clip as well. But how are you feeling? You just had a fight with uh, uh, with Edwards. How are you doing? Yeah. I, I'm doing good. I mean, I didn't get touched. Look at my face, man. I don't got a scratch on it. Yeah, you do look good. You have no yeah. scratch. How would you feel about the fight, though? How would you feel about the fight? I mean, looking at back, you know, I, I, I doubled him in strike strikes count. You know, I had five minutes of control time. He didn't have one minute. So I feel like I beat him in the fight. You know, I broke my foot in, like, the first 30 seconds of the fight that people don't know about yet. The, the x-rays will start coming Straight out. up. Because you're Straight in a up. boot. I mean, people can't obviously see it. But you broke your yeah. foot in the first minute of the fight? The first minute of the fight. Like, I had the Damn. picture on my phone, like, the exact moment where it landed on his nope. elbow. Shit. Yeah. Can we see it? Yeah, for sure. Of course. First and, minute. And you and, and first Col minute. And Kobe, you know, Not right yet. off the like Damn. once once that strike hits, Kobe, you know in your head, you're like, it's broke. Yeah, you feel you know it. You feel it swelling up where you're just like, oh, you like that. At the end of the first round, you're just like, man, that hurts. Like I usually I sit in the on the stool and I didn't want to sit down in the stool. So this is like the exact, exact Kobe. I, I mean, the, the fight went five rounds when it came down to a decision. How do you fight the next four rounds with a broken oh, the elbow. foot? Is yeah, it the elbow? Hit the elbow. Landed right on the right elbow, the top of the foot. You know. Wow. And they're telling me that I think it was the vernacular or something. I can't remember the exact terminology the doctor was telling me yesterday. But he's like, "Yeah, you probably have a fracture in your vernacular or vernacular or something. Yeah. One of those bones down there. There's like 27 metatarsals in your foot." So. It's tough to know which. Well, how, exactly. how do you fight the rest of the fight with a broken foot? How do you even stand <laughs> yeah. up with a broken foot? Much less yeah. throwing punches and kicks and grappling, yeah. everything that was going on. How does that work? It, it's tough. You know, it limits your mobility. Like, I couldn't really move after that. I was kind of stuck in place. And, you know, I was just trying to make sure that I could get through the fight. I didn't, I, you know, I never quit. You know, you got to, you know, I, I always channeled the the strength of the first responders in our military because, uh, you know, that's the, the cloth that I was cut from. My, my grandfather flew in the Korean and Vietnam War. So, you know, if he's looking down on me, he's not going to be happy unless I fight to the end, you know, fight to the death. And that's my mentality when I go into the octagon. It's kill or be killed every time. Well, you have you have that reputation, your, your pain tolerance uh, on, on when you're going in these fights. And by the way, so if you have the pain here and Leon's throwing those left kicks to the back of your because, you know, that part that was marked on your what is it? Your right. Uh, yeah. Right rear, right, right yeah. hamstrings. When you see that whole thing getting bruised up, yeah. Which pain is a worse pain? Is it the left ankle 
or is it the, is it the thigh? Oh, it was the left ankle. For Not sure. even close. Yeah, I was okay. I was compensating on it. You know, I wasn't really able to step on it, so that's why he was landing a couple leg kicks on my right thigh because my left foot was broken. So I was kind of putting all my weight on my right thigh, and that's terrible. When I started at, towards the end of the fight, I was like, you know what, just deal with the pain and start lifting up your right leg and start checking some of these kicks, you know. And he didn't start kicking after like the fourth round because he started see, feeling that I was catching his timing with the kicks and he didn't want to break his leg on my knee, so. Now, let, let me ask you, does he know, do you think he knows or he would have no clue that you broke your left hand? Like, he doesn't know that that's happening. Because as a fighter, yeah. you know, are you reading the other guy's pain, flinch, eye movement to say, yeah, it looks like it hurts. It looks like, because, you know, you've seen fights where a guy breaks his wrist in boxing yeah. and he just doesn't throw it anymore and you know to go for or you know the ribs are, you know, some happen here so you keep attacking it. Yeah. Is he reading that you're in pain? Do you think he knew that you had that pain? No, he didn't know because I'm good at masking and not showing weakness and showing that I had the pain. And I learned early in my career that I thought when we go to the round at the end of the round, like we're in a vacuum seal and no one in the world can hear it. It's our coaches giving us advice and no one's going to hear anything. But I had said something in my corner. I was like, hey, I think I have an injury. And they went back to the other corner on the broadcast. They were like, oh, he just said he had an injury. He said this is going mm. on. So they attacked that weakness. So I had learned that. No matter how I feel coming back to the end of the round, when I'm sitting on my stool, like, don't say anything to the coach. Even to your own guys. Yeah, even to my own guys. Because the cameras are watching everything you're saying. I got yeah. it. Damn. Wow. So, so now I just had to keep it wow, to myself. Wow, what a shitty situation to... Can you I, imagine, I, like, you have I would to have, talk to I would somebody... I like, Kobe, and you're like, I pro here, just you gotta be like a <laughs> secret in there. Yeah. That, I mean, so, that's... But that's the fight. That's so how... You, your corners, your trainers, your coaches, they had yeah, no idea you had sense. a broken foot the entire fight? They dude. had no idea until I told them afterwards when I was limping backstage. They're like, dude, what happened? I was like, the first kick that I threw landed on his elbow, and they're like, why don't you tell us? I'm yeah, like, exactly. Because I've learned in, in prior fights that, that the whole world's gonna see that, and they're just gonna go tell him on the broad Podcast. You see how quick social media is these days, so yep. they can literally get that information within seconds of seeing it on the broadcast. So, you know, it's the first time in my career I didn't sit on the stool after every round, after the five rounds. I just stayed standing up because I could feel my foot swelling up, and I didn't want to sit down and get comfortable. I wanted to stay standing up and and just dig down deep to to get through the fight. Now, let let me ask you, fighting Kim Leon Edwards, uh, uh, uh and and. As a fan watching him, right, not a technical fighter where I can't see, you know, I'm not a technical where I've been in your world and I can kind of read what's really going on. Yeah. From a fan's perspective, he's not a guy that's going to sell out the arena. Okay, people are not going to see him sell out the arena. He doesn't talk. He's very quiet to himself. I think he's Jamaican, if I'm not mistaken. Is he, is he Jamaican? He's a yeah. very friendly guy. He seems like a just chill guy. But fighting against him, this guy, we had Usman on, on here on uh, – uh, Two days ago, right? He takes Usman out, uh, uh, I think two times, right? When he had, let me see the records here. Yeah, back to back. Then it's you, Nate Diaz. Okay, you know Dos Anjos, Both of you, you did Dos, Dos Anjos as well. Yeah. You know he's had some fights. What's What's unique about What's unique about Edwards? His style of fighting, yeah. purely his style of fighting. I mean, yeah, purely his style of fighting. Because if you're talking about his personality, he has no redeeming qualities. The guy. I mean, there's more charisma in that wet mop in the corner of this room. <laughs> so, I mean, the guy is just unlikable. He's just he doesn't he doesn't bring anything to the table as far as fighting goes. So, in the fight, you know, he he's a well-rounded fighter, but there's nothing special. He's not like a world class in anywhere. He's just pretty good everywhere. So he's not the best fighter you've gone up against. Nah, he's not the best. fighter. Who's the ever. best guy you've gone gone up against? Yeah, the best guy I've gone up against is is. You know, probably Usman, you know, he, he's a well-rounded fighter. He's a good wrestler. He's a knockout artist. He's a guy who could put you out with one punch. So, you know, that guy, I would say, is a lot more dangerous threat. And I fought him when, you know, he was in his absolute prime a couple years ago when he was number one pound for pound. So that was the best guy I've ever fought, you know. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was a way more dangerous threat than Leon. Look, I, I just got this fight four days ago. I don't have a scratch on my face. I mean, I, I doubled the the strike count on him. You know, he got a couple leg kicks. That's that's how he won is, is a couple leg kicks on me. And that was because I was compensated because I was favoring my right leg because my left foot was broken. So You, you mentioned, uh, I think you were on Jesse Waters, that you think that they basically took this decision from you because you said you support Donald Trump and that cost you the fight. We all Two-part question. We, a, we asked Usman, what's more important these days in UFC? <clears throat> the the product or the marketing really like how good of a fighter are you or how good of a marketer are you no doubt you're one of the best in both edwards with all due respect he beat you right so what's the re reality for someone like edwards is it he's just a good product horrible marketer 
it's the Trump thing, it was stolen from you kind of a thing, get the analogy. Where is he on this? Where are you on this with all that being said? Yeah, you know, I don't think I was beat last weekend. I think I gained a lot more and the fans see the truth of the fighter and the marketer that I am, the, the entertainment aspect that I bring to this sport. You know, I make it fun for the fans. They pay their hard-earned money to watch us. So, you know, as far as Leon, no one was watching or tuning into the fight to see Leon. It was either the people that absolutely loved me or he was just borrowing my haters for a night. It wasn't like he actually brought in any extra fans. Mm -hmm. So, But is that is that sustainable? Meaning, if he just wins every fight, I'm not saying that he's undefeated. Yeah. If he just shuts his mouth, gets to work, but wins. What's wrong with that? It's not enough, you know. I mean, anybody can just win, you know, but you need to, if you're really confident in your skills and you really think you're this all-time great, you know, you should you should talk about it. You should start telling people this. You should start bringing animosity to these fights and, and getting people excited to watch these fights because, you know, they're paying their hard-earned money for this pay-per-view. How are you going to sell a pay-per-view if you're not saying one thing to the guy and you're just sitting there quiet, like no one wants to see two guys that are like, "Oh, I respect you. What's respect, <laughs> oh, yeah, honor, MMA? I love you. You know, let's do it." hundred percent. He's right. When you're seeing a, uh, uh, when you're seeing like I thought Mayweather and Connor, their press conference is probably the best one of all time. He was yeah. slapping I, him on the head. I think the backpack <laughs> and all that stuff. I thought that was the best best press yeah. conference uh, of all time. And there's been a few of them, right? Like the Daniel Cormier and. Uh, John, John Jones, Jones, the interview, yeah. phenomenal yeah. interview. Connor, Nick Diaz, it's like, so, uh, you know, can you count to 10? He says, uh, <laughs> I'm going to count to five, right? Or, hey, we're going to talk about money. Hey, you can take this one out. I'll be asking you questions about money. Yeah. Yeah. That was great, Beautiful. right, those moments that you had. Yeah. And then some of them is, again, purely from a fan perspective, some of them you know it's real. Some of them you know you're 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 selling. Yeah, you you kind of like, okay, because – the other guy's not responding to any of it. Like when Connor did the uh, Muslim thing, I think you know, with, with him and Khabib, when they were going back and forth, and then you saw Khabib, the guy says, hey, uh, salam alaikum, you know, and by the way, Connor, congratulations on your proper 12, and he says, hey, you can't say that and then say thank you to alcohol. Well, yeah. He says, well, do something about it, yeah. right? These yeah. are moments <laughs> yeah. that are built yeah. to fight. Yeah. But, but I, I want to ask you this question because I actually enjoy your performance. I enjoy how you're putting on a show and doing what you're doing. But... You know, the comments made about the father. I just want to ask to see what you're going to say. Yeah. Comments made about the father. Even Dana comes back and says, look, you guys can say whatever trash talk you want to do. But when it comes up to family, stay out of it. Yeah. Connor's done it with Dustin, wife. You did it with Leon's father. And Leon's a, he's a southpaw, right? Because when he threw it, it was perfectly accurate. I don't even know what he threw out your face. Yeah, he threw was a it water a, bottle. He threw a water bottle. I'm like, yeah. how does he, how's he that accurate? Yeah, I with couldn't figure that out. Then I'm like, this guy's a southpaw. I got yeah, it. Okay, yeah. This makes sense. <laughs> so what, what is the limit? You know, do you feel bad when you make those comments or you're like, no, my job is to sell and I'm a showman? Um, You know, I'm honesty is everything with me, you know, like the truth is always the things that sting the most to these fighters out there. So, you know, I'm not saying this guy's on the same level of like a Hitler or just someone like that. But when are we going to celebrate someone who, who's had such a terrible past? You know, the guy was literally a sex trafficker. The guy was literally caught up with with drug lords. And, and who are you talking about? I'm talking about Leon's father. I mean, he has a troubled criminal past. I mean, there's legitimate facts that he did, you know, like. I'm not going to hide the truth, and I'm not going to feel sorry for someone who, you know, put torment and so much pain in people's lives. You know, there's a lot of victims left over from Leon's father, you know, the, whether it was the women that he sex trafficked, whether it was the people that he sold drugs to. I mean, it's just I'm not going to feel bad for someone like that. So, you know, it is what it is. That's that's life. You know, I'm just being honest with him. You know, I'm, dude, he's not a good person. And you, you're doubling down. You're not even, you know, uh, pulling back on this. You're doubling down on his father. I'm doubling down. Why would I feel bad for us? anything I say about someone that ha is such a criminal and put so much pain in people's lives? You know, I'm not going to feel bad for someone like that. Just like Hitler. He was a, he was a terrible person, man. You're comparing his dad to Hitler. I'm not comparing him to Hitler, but I'm saying it's that same you, level of bad guy. Like the so, guy... The guy sold drugs. He he sex tra sex sex and you traffic know this? women. Is this public? Is this yeah. public information? Public information. And it's crazy because nobody. I mean, <clears throat> just hearing the comment, you're like, oh, dude, you, you're saying his dad's in hell. Nobody really knows. I I didn't know about the history of his dad. I know his dad was sex trafficking people and selling drugs. I mean, if if that's public yeah. information, to, so maybe let me ask a different question because, you know, uh, we run mm -hmm. a sales organization and we have meetings that are very very intense and yeah. call outs and all this stuff and we have a rule. Call out whatever you want, 
don't hit family, don't hit spouse, you're fine, okay? And there'll be the shit talking that takes yeah. place. Now, obviously, there's no fights. It's not a real fight that we're talking about. Do you get a call and say, hey, you crossed the line? Like, you can't say that again. Or in UFC, no one's going to call you to tell you anything. It's just, if you want to say it, say it. Nothing's off the table. Is that kind of how the culture is in UFC? I or mean, will you get a call at times? Yeah, I mean, you'll definitely get a call at times if, if you're racist or you go after someone's religion. But I would never go after those two things, you know. I, I'll expose things that need to be exposed because it's the truth and it's honesty. Like, you can look up the public records about his dad and... It's not my fault. He's the one that put him in the limelight in the first place and tried to make it a sympathetic uh, figure. Oh, I lost my father. Oh, this and that. And they made it feel like, oh, let's give uh, Leon sympathy for this. Like, that's mm -hmm. not something you should give someone sympathy for. If my dad was doing things like that, I, I would call him out on that, too. I'd be like, dude, I'm, you know, he probably deserves to be six feet under because, you know, he, he, he did a lot of bad things to people in this life, so... You know, I'm not going to feel bad or celebrate that person like he's a hero because that guy's not a hero. He's a villain. He's a, he's a terrible person. He did terrible well, things. Apparently, he was shot and killed when Leon was 13. So how much do you think this had adverse effect on you? Because Leon said he was completely enraged, emotional, crying. This is after he threw the water bottle. Obviously, there was a, a little tussle right there. And he said that, you know, it breaks my heart that he uses my father as entertainment. And he said... About you, he said that he's a great <coughs> competitor, but he's a dirty human being. This is his response to you. So with all that being said, like, have you guys spoken after the fight? How does it work? Is there any apologies? Or it's like, fuck you, go to hell. No, I mean, I didn't break his bank account. I might have might have broke his feelings. He might be hurt. But even Dana White said after I said that, the pay-per-views jumped 25% instantly. Mm -hmm. This is Dana's words and quotes. So, you know, whether you want to say it's for entertainment and for selling pay-per-views... You know, I made Leon a lot more money just talking about it. So, you know, what, what, no matter what you want to think of it, whether good or bad, you know, I put more money in Leon's bank account, and he should be thanking me for that. Kobe, uh, uh, how much of this is – because, you know, like, uh, Too Short. Uh, not Too – is it Too Short? Yeah, Too the Short. Rapper? You know the rapper Too Short back yeah. in the day. Says, I don't know if you remember Too Short. So yeah. Too Short, you know, every record he would do, he said, this is my final album. <laughs> Six months later. No, no, this is the this final. One, I'm about serious. 12 times yeah. it was always we're buying great his marketing. final album. But it's a great marketing. Another guy that was a great marketer. He says he, when he went to hang out with uh, Tupac, he says on any given day, you had no idea what personality would show up, right? Mm -hmm. One minute it would be the party guy. Let's go, girls. Let's go. Again. You know, one minute it's the philosopher. Did you know the Hegelian dialectic? And did you know what? No, no, no. One minute is the revolutionary guy. You know, it's, oh, we're going to go take over the world, and it's not fair what they're doing to our people. One minute it was the gangster, right? One minute it was the artist, right? So you, you didn't know who that person was going to be on any given day. Do you feel you have a little bit of that? Because, you know, like uh, uh, Usman sees you at the airport. You guys run into each other. What a nice guy. Talk to me, gentleman, the whole night. And then if I see you in the airport again, I'm going to blah, 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 right? Is that an act or is it, you know, you don't know what personality of Kobe is going to show up on any given day? W which one do you think it is? Because sometimes creatives have multiple personalities. It's not just yeah. one thing that it is. Which one do you think is you? No, there's definitely no act or personality with me. I just turn it up to 11 when I get into business and around a camera. I'm not going to be nice. You know, we're getting locked in a cage to kill that person. That's what the people want to celebrate. They want to see bloodlust. They want to see fighters getting broken bones and sent to the hospital. So why am I going to feel bad about some words that I'm saying? And, and the words I'm saying, I, I believe they're true. And I, I stand behind those with conviction. So I'm not going to feel bad for exposing the truth to the world. And people are sensitive, you know, it's, Get a helmet, like my friend Candace, Candace Owens says. Get a helmet, and, and big deal. Get over it. So, you know, there's no personality. I'm just not afraid to, to speak the truth. And when it's time to do business and, and it's fight week and the cameras are on, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to say things that I feel are true, and that opponent has a chance to go in the octagon, do whatever you want to me. Yeah. He, had, he had 25 minutes to do whatever he wanted, to take his frustrations out on me legally, and he wasn't able to do anything. There's not a scratch on my face. It was a, it was an easy fight. I can't believe they paid me that much money to, to go fight that guy. I got a follow-up question for you, but we, before we do, let's go to the sponsor here, American Heart for Gold. So, look, I've been in the financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. 
I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So click on the link in the description or call 866-939-6984. Again, 866-939-6984. So, you know, President Trump, okay, um, he gets up there. He's comfortable calling everybody out. Oh, what, what did you say about the... Uh, uh, McCain, I want my um, soldiers to not be prisoners of war. <laughs> not, you know? get <laughs> not get caught. Not get caught. Right? <laughs> you know, and then the next thing you know, he gets heat from there, right? And then he calls out fake news, calls out Acosta, calls out everybody, and he's nonstop about it, right? Okay. Yeah. When you do that, you know, uh, uh, you know certain people when you joke with them and they're sarcastic towards you, but then all of a sudden you're sarcastic towards them yeah. and they're kind of like hurt. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, bro. You, What's, what's wrong with you're good dishing it, but you're not good taking it, right? Yep. How much of it is also for you where it's like, you know they're gonna say stuff to you right after the fight. You know he didn't look good. It's time to retire. Michael Chandler, he's got to be in prelims moving forward. His fights is no longer main fight. You know, <laughs> Patty is saying if I see him in the streets, I'm gonna you know whatever. And then Strickland talking about I can't believe what he just said, and Strickland wanting to say things to you. Yeah. How, what is your reaction? Because your your immediate reaction right now, smile on your face. Do you get off of it? Or are you like? I'm getting the world to react to me, or you're not even thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think about it, but obviously my first reaction to it now is just laughing because all those people, there's no uh, substance. They're, they're talking the talk. They're not going to walk the walk. You know, Patty, they gave him two heroin had addicts to fight back-to-back, -back, and he didn't even beat the last one. He fought this guy, Jared Gordon, a legit heroin addict, and he didn't even win the fight. The world knew he lost that fight. So... You know, if he didn't have a bull cut and an accent, nobody would care about Patty. <laughs> That's the only reason they like him is a bull so cut and an accent. So He's not even a good fighter. He'll never be a top 30 fighter. The closest he'll ever get to fighting for a world title is if he got on his knees and came and sniffed my jockstrap. <laughs> facts <laughs> but he's a good marketer it's the truth how about he's a good marketer he just has a bull cut and accent he's not even but a marketer like, he is so entertaining but like, he is entertaining. Kobe, an accent so hard he thought he was from ireland i'm like no he's from england bro <laughs> yeah. same it's shit so bro. wild but like, you know he cut the bull cut now he's got like uh braids oh, oh well i mean, I mean for the fight no for, for, they get cornrows for the for the fight just, cornrows yeah. my apologies yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. want to you know cultural yeah. appropriate chandler, chandler said you know prelims yeah. and strickland is you know he he he, he just straight up stopped he wanted to make a comment about what you said about leon's father yeah, I mean, look at the stuff that Sean Strickland does. He should worry about uh, figuring out his justice system situation over in Vegas, pistol whipping some guy in the middle of the street and almost shooting the guy dead that was just walking around drunk around his neighborhood. So the guy's a train wreck. That's the type of guy that might do some Eddie Guerrero stuff to his family in the future. You got to be careful. I don't, I, you know, that guy's he's brain dead. He's been hit in the head too many times. So, he, you know, I, I think he's going to have some some problems in the future. And then... Michael Chandler, who, who? I mean, the guy was getting knocked out in Bellator. The guy's a complete scrub. What's his UFC record? Like one in four? Like we're talking about that. My win percent in the my win percentage in the UFC is like over ninety percent. Like it's just, you know, I'm an all time great in this division. I've done things in this division that people aren't ever going to do. I mean, I'm the only fighter to ever go to the White House and hang out with a sitting president. I'm the only one to ever get the first family front row. I'm the only one to ever have you know a president out there supporting him, dapping me up before I walk in the octagon. So. He can keep talking all he wants, but there's no substance. Another guy that's just all talk and no walk. Can I ask you a question? Uh, so, um, Colby, the, when it comes to Trump, and I'm pretty sure with you, it's either, you know, love or hate. There's nobody. I don't, I've never met somebody that's just like, yeah, Trump, you know, I'm cool with him. It's either love or hate. What, what was the moment for you, Colby? Because I know, I know what, it is, what, what it was for me about the country and, and the movement and the voice. It couldn't have been – I'm not saying it could have been anybody, but what was that moment for you where you're like, oh, shit, like this – this is this president is this is who I I connect with, and then that phone call you beat uh, Tyrone Woodley. You're sitting in there post fight. You're you're getting interviewed, and all of a sudden somebody comes and gives you a phone, <laughs> and it's the president of the United States is Trump. How what was that moment for you, Kobe? And how does that feel sitting in an interview, and the president of the United States wants to talk to you? I mean, the moment where I really 
was just like, man, that's so admirable, was just seeing that he gave up his, you know, rich and wealthy lifestyle to to come fight for America. The guy could be having his toes in the sand with Mama Cita's giving him Mai Tais on the beach every single day, but he doesn't want to do that. He He's the only president in history who his net worth has went down after being in office. So who else can say that? All these other guys like the Bidens, you know, the 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 Clintons, you know, the, their net worth goes up substantially. The Obamas, they go up substantially after they're in office. They they use all these uh, politicians and all these lobbyists, and they just make money from them. So that's when I respected Trump the most, most, just seeing that he was willing to give up his lifestyle, his net worth, his, his you know, his great business tactics that he has to save America, you know, to save against all these communist swamp creatures that are in D.C. right now. So... You know, that's when I gained the most respect. And just to see all the loyalty that he's shown me, I mean, he's calling me after a fight. You know, he's giving me advice before fights. He's, you know, invite me over to his house at Mar-a-Lago to have dinner, like, before my fights. You know, just the amount of loyalty that he's shown me, like, just some nobody fighter. Like, he's the most famous person on earth. He doesn't have to call me and waste his time. He has the busiest schedule of any man on, on earth right now. So just seeing how loyalty loyal he is to me just shows he's just a regular dude. Just the, the guy next door that... That respects people, and if you show him loyalty, he's going to show it to you in return. Does that when you know that he's in the audience, uh, Kobe? Does that feel? Does that make you like? Because I get, I get like, if, if these guys come to see me perform, I know in the back of my head doing stand up, I'm like, okay, I know exactly. Pat's is he laughing? Is Adam laughing? You know, I see Rob's shiny head. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking around. I'm booing <laughs> in the back. Yeah, Adam, Adam is <laughs> like, is throwing laughing? tomatoes. Kobe, when you when you're fighting, bro, and I, yeah. you know where he's at. Everybody knows where Trump is at. Oh, yeah, does that fuel you? Does that does that amp you up that you know that this guy's there? It does. It does amp me up, but it's also a lot of pressure. You don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to let that guy down, you know, and mm-hmm. especially all the things he's done for me in my career and done for this country. I mean, he's single-handedly fought back against the swamp, swamp and exposed all the corruption of the Democrats. You know, these guys will go to any length to, to take back this country. They, they don't want America to be free and, and, and fair. They, you know, they don't want the people to be in control of America. They want to have all this communist stuff. You know, look at how they shut down our country for a fake pandemic just so they could do control the mail-in ballots. And then, you know, now they're letting our border just be completely wide open so they can use those illegals to vote for, vote for them. But they're still losing in the polls. And, you know, weaponizing the justice system, that's third world dictator type thing. So, you know, Trump's the only man standing between them and America. And, you know, he loves America more than he loves himself and more than he loves his family. Like, that's how much he cares about America and, and changing America forever. So... We need America back. We need uh, Donald Trump back in office. He's going to restore democracy in America. Colby, I got to tell you, bro, what you're doing with the Trump and the MAGA, brilliant. I'll tell you why. Uh, We were at UFC uh, in Miami. Yeah. When was that? This past summer. A couple months ago. Let me tell you, this was was the first time I've been to a UFC fight, okay? I've been in that heat arena a thousand times. All of a sudden, we hear, (laughs) wow. Yeah, they don't like announce him. They don't announce him. He's not on camera. What's going on? They're like, Trump just showed up. Crowd's going nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so at, at that moment, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> UFC loves them some Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? It was impressive. So I know you're saying that possibly you being a Trump supporter caused you this fight, but from a marketing standpoint, from an alignment standpoint, for who you who your brand is, this is on brand, right? Yeah. So never apologize for that. Whether you people like Trump, not try Trump, this has helped your brand, no doubt. I don't know any other UFC fighters marketing make America great again like you. So But I but I think he's a hundred percent true believer. Genuine. Oh, I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah, it's I, an I'm, act. I'm, yeah. I think I, he is zero yeah. percent an act, right? So Number one, when are you running for Congress? Number two, if Trump wins, are you going to take a position as White House? But most importantly, are you the Donald Trump of the UFC? Yeah, I do believe I'm the Donald Trump of the UFC. He's my biggest role model. Role model. He's my mentor, and he's someone that I really look up to. So I try and model my career after a lot of things that he's done. And, you know, I definitely would like to run for Congress in a few years. You know, I think I'd be the perfect fighter. You know, I'm not a guy that's going to sell out to the establishment. I, I'm a self-made man from nothing. You know, I came from a blue-collar family in Oregon who had absolutely nothing, who lived in the trailer parks. Now I'm a multi-million dollar athlete. So, you know, I, I think that I can do great things for this Republican and conservative movement that other guys won't be able to do because they don't have the funds and means to do mm-hmm. it. So, 
you know, I, I appreciate everything Donald Trump's done for me. I, I'm a true believer. I'll, I'll, I'll die fighting for that, man. Like, I've given up my platform for him. I'm completely shadow banned on one of the platforms, you know, that's the biggest platform. I'm not going to talk about it. It doesn't deserve it. But, you know, I even had the UFC try and reach out to him and be like, hey, why is he shadow banned? And they won't even tell him. They won't even, you can't even search me in some of the search bars. The only one that people can find me on is really X because Elon Musk has restored free speech in America. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can't say the same for Zuckerberg. He's done some pretty nasty things. He believes in communism and, you know, he's he's in cahoots with China as well. I mean, and I mean, he put what five hundred million dollars into the last election, which is crazy for for mail in ballots and all these places. He that's I mean, Ooh, that's, Zuck? Zuckerberg spent what was it, Rob? Five hundred million dollars. Look on the yeah, look. No, like, that's absolutely. Like, if, and by the way, you know what he is. He's a Democrat. So where do you think that that money and all that thing was going for? Look, can't even find my my profile. Well, I have. I've had over a million followers for. Oh, and this is on Instagram right now. If you type look, in Colby I was Cullen, and your name is pop up. Can't find I was, me. All my fan pages. Stop it, dude. I, bet, I, sort of, I, I was yeah. looking for. But, but, but put that? in your actual, Disgusting. like, put it together so it's not. Despicable. No, but. Oh, but you have to put it you, together? Why do you have to put it together? Oh, I don't know. It's miss the start. end. Go miss the end. Just go like Colby Covington, like, almost there. So you got to yeah. spell out the whole entire gotcha. name. Come yeah, on. No, yeah. I'm like, He's right. just tagging you before I came in here, Kobe. It wouldn't let me find you. I'm like, yeah. I had to put it in twice. I'm like, where the hell is Kobe, it? Kobe, when did that start? That started four years ago when I put up my picture with Donald Trump wow. as my head head profile picture. By, by the way, you know, if, if I type in, look, okay, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, let's just say. Yeah, the you put PA. Bone. Just PA. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's the first one. Insane, can we can we do a right? quick little thing right here? Like People don't realize how three like that super is. famous names and see how it pops up. Yeah, Patrick is first. No, no. Yeah, you, you, by the way, yeah. put put Dana. Yeah. Put Dana like to see. Not even though right there. It pops up. Dana, Dana, Dana White pops Boom. up. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. That's a, a, try something like going to a complete different space. Go yeah. to Anthony that, Edwards. I have all my profiles like, that have 500 unbelievable. followers. Unbelievable. Type in Anthony Edwards like uh, uh, right there. He just pops, pops up. Right all up. you have yeah. to do is Anthony. Right. He pops up. Yeah. The blue huh. check mark. Why? Why Damn. do you think that is, though? Do you think oh, do you, you think it's pol purely political? It's purely political. It's it's completely their agenda. They're trying to silence free speech. They don't want anybody that has that opposes their narrative, you know. And and if you go, if you don't believe everything that the liberals say, and you don't believe that it's flame and yawn, even though it's it's shit, and they're trying to <laughs> shove <laughs> shit down your throat, then they'll censor you. They will not allow free speech in America, and that's what our youth and our kids need to see. Like this is the stuff they need to see. They don't need to have all this. This woke CRT critical race theory agenda shoved mm -hmm. down their throats and and not be able to see the other side of it, the Republican conservative side. So, you know, it's it is what it is. I'm glad I, I would stand up. I don't need social media to know that I'm famous or know that I'm standing for what is right. I know I'm standing for what's right because look at I don't even like really talk so much political. I'm just showing my support for Trump. That's all I'm doing is you know, I respect Trump as a businessman, as a man, as a father, as a family guy. The guy's just a great person overall. And look, I put up a picture with them, and that's why they're censoring me. They won't allow my uh, profile to be viewed by the masses. They want to shadow ban me. So it's just disgusting. It's despicable. Yeah, that, that's that's a, a. I wonder who else they're doing that with. You know, the fact that somebody can't find the name right off the bat and have to type the whole thing in, I have to put it together for it to pull up. Yeah, deeply concerning. Okay, uh, 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 let me let me uh, go to you know couple things here with while we're on the topic LeBron LeBron walks in you made a couple comments on it on what he did yeah. uh, and, and I know you talked about it with full sand Nelk boys all those guys and you know your you know walks in I think it's this kid's a game or something like that and then he grabs a seat doesn't even stand up you're thinking maybe after you get to your seat then you're gonna stand up at least pay some kind of respect yeah nothing and you know, you know, you you see that. Why is that important? So maybe maybe a person on the other side is going to say, "Look, he just chose to sit down." Why is that important to somebody on the left, right, and the middle for the biggest sp star in basketball to stand up during the national anthem? Yeah, why it's important is because the place that he's made all his money and his billion dollar net worth is the country that he's sitting down for that that national anthem the the fallen heroes of the families that supported his uh freedom here in America so he could chase his dreams and have his opportunity in the NBA he would be nothing without this country try and go make that money over in China try and make that money in Korea and all these other countries that aren't free and no you couldn't do it so the fact that he's just spitting on the face of all our all our service members, you know, all our military veterans, past and present, is just, it's the most despicable thing I've ever seen in my life. The guy is just, you know, he's just a shill. Why do you think he's not? You think it's intentional? It's intentional. Why do you think he's not standing up? 
because, you know, he's paid and bought for by a Chinese. He's a Chinese finger puppet. You know, the, he's got all his sweatshops over in China where he makes his hundreds of millions of dollars off merchandise. So he's told to, to, to you know, be, have a muzzle on him and not talk. Don't talk Do you think talk he's told or you think that's him? Meaning, you know, you know because the, there's a lot of guys in the NBA that are, yeah. you know, somebody can say, well, you know, some owners, Mark Cuban defended this, this, that, but he still stands up. There's a lot of guys that are still paid by China that still stand up. Why do you think he's not standing up? I think he's just completely paid and bought for, and I, I just don't think he's intelligent enough to to formulate his own response to why he's not. He just it's just straight money going to his bank account. You think he loves America? No, he hates America. He he sits down every time there's a national anthem playing. He he shits on all our first responders. He he's literally called hits on our first responders, the people that protect us and keep us free. Oh, oh, police, BLM, oh, they're so bad. But then anytime there's any situation, oh, police, help me, help me, help my James family come protect us and and make sure you know no, none of my crazy fans come after me. But then he'll go on on the internet and just talk about how police are so bad and and you know he'll talk about a one percent of a one percent of a situation and, and try and despise them like they're the bad guys when mm. when our first responders, our, our law enforcement is our heroes and our backbone of our country in America. Has he ever given a positive shout out to cops? No. Nope. I, I no. just saw this tweet from 2021. Remember when he deleted the tweet about police shooting uh, at uh, Makia Bryant. LeBron James is inciting violence on Ohio uh, police. This is this. What was a tweet that he had there? I'm so damn tired of seeing black police, black people killed by police. I took yeah. the tweet down because it's being used to create more hate. This sure. isn't about one officer. It's about the entirety of a system. Uh, uh, like I wonder, has he ever gone up and said, hey, I just want to thank everybody here, the, the, the service. I want to thank the military personnel. I want to thank our officers, our firefighters, our first responders. Absolutely not. Pat. Have you ever heard him say that? No, absolutely not. not. And, and Colby, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Just the... the and this goes to show how much China, and I've said this on multiple podcasts, he's obviously owned by China. A lot of the athletes here are. Who is the, the wrestler? I don't, that, that John Cena. John Cena yeah. said something sticking up for the poor people of Taiwan, and then he had to say a, an apology in Mandarin because he knows that that's the hand, that's the hand that feet that which feet he them. somehow speaks fluently. Flu fluently. <laughs> but, and, and mind you, dude, and I've said this so many times, China – Owns our asses. They fly spy balloons. They own. They own Biden. They own LeBron. And bro, the, the beauty about this country and Kobe, I'm a veteran. Pat's a veteran. You you have the freedom here to do that. You yeah. can do that. You could sit there. He can make snow angels on the court. But guess what? You're a shitty person yeah. for doing it. I have zero respect. Okay, he's an athlete. People are like, well, you got to respect this game. I don't give a shit about the game. I'm not even a basketball fan. But you're a shitty person to go in there while everybody's standing up and respecting uh, the national anthem, and you're sitting there. That's a he's he's letting the what world. A terrible know. example to. Kids, That's what I was just gonna say. Terrible kids example. are watching it going, hey, if LeBron James, and people don't realize how many millions, Pat, how many millions oh, of children in this country know and they see that and they go, oh, you know what? He's doing it to hell with America. You, you We're know, evil. We're by wrong. the way, for some people that are watching this who are diehard LeBron fans, yeah. okay, they're like, oh, you guys are being unfair. I would love to see a video clip of him giving a shout out and thanking cops or military firefighters or military personnel. I'd love to see it. I've never seen it. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Especially I've never seen it. Especially when he uses their service so constantly, you know, it's police yeah. police security right. detail to <laughs> yeah. protect his family. So the guy puts a ball in a hoop. You play a kid's game. You're not you're not you haven't solved world hunger. You haven't solved cancer. Stop acting like you're so righteous and and you're perfect, dude. That guy's not a role model. The role models are military guys like you who who fought for our freedoms and defended our, our country's land. You know, first responders who, you know, protect our, our communities, protect our, our, you know, all the big people in this country. And those are, the, those are the real models that our kids should be looking up to, not these athletes who put a ball in a hoop. How does that make you so special? You know, Colby, see. maybe there's a deeper narrative here, you know, because right now I'm picturing Colby versus LeBron, right? But I'm going deeper. I'm seeing UFC versus the NBA. What do I mean? So we all remember during 2020, during the bubble, no league was more woke or social justice warriors than the NBA. Yep. Everyone like literally changed the name on their jerseys yeah. to whatever cause they had end races. The current goal, thing. Whatever, the whatever it was. I think a couple guys had I'm with her. I don't know what's going on out there. <laughs> yeah. But UFC. So, they, I mean, even Golden State Warriors, when they won the championship, they wouldn't go meet Trump in the White House. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say that the NBA is 
left. It's I don't. I don't see left. Trump going to NBA games. No. I see Trump happen. showing up to UFC fights. Yeah. I see a lot of UFC yeah. guys. You know, even Masvidal, who's not your buddy these days, we can touch on that at this point. He loves him some Trump, and a lot of guys are, are kind of, I assume, are in that camp. So, from a deeper perspective, the UFC, the mentality, the ideology there versus the NBA, what they stand for, the relationship with China, not going to visit the White House, Adam Silver versus Dana White, is a bigger, compelling story here. Give us the bigger narrative: NBA versus UFC. Yeah, the bigger narrative is, you know, Dana White, Hunter Campbell, the guys that run the UFC, they're free speech absolutists. You know, they believe in us not being muzzled. We should be able to say whatever they want. You know, in the NBA, Adam Silver tells them, nope, you're going to stay, you're going to say the left narrative. And that's, there's only going to be one way that we're going to talk about because those are the guys that are paying our bills. Those are the ones that we have our merchandise deals with. Those are the ones that we have our, our TV deals with over in China. So, you know, NBA is not a free league. Like I have guys that have reached out me, to me on Instagram from the NBA. They're like, man, we appreciate what you're standing up for, Colby, but we can't say the same thing because then we'll lose our livelihood. Then we yeah. won't have our checks to to pay for our, our houses and pay for our food on the table for our families. So I feel bad for these guys where they're not allowed to express their real thoughts and feelings. They have to. But they have to listen to what, you know, the narrative that shoved down their throat from the left in the NBA. And that there's one way. And if you go up against it, then you're going to lose your job. I mean, look at what they did to Kyrie Irving. They painted him out in the street like he was the biggest villain of all time. The guy's just, you know, believe in free speech, believe in, you know, his own, you know, right to choose what he should do with his body. My body, my choice. He's not like a guy like Travis Kelsey out there who's believing in, oh, I'm paid off by Pfizer. Guys, get two shots at the same time. That's the healthiest thing oh, you could God. ever do with your life. Yeah. Dude, two sh shots. I mean, I didn't get the vaccine. I don't believe in vaccine, but I'm not against someone that does believe in vaccine. If you did get the vaccine, you should probably just get one at a time because if there's adverse and, and wrong effect in it, then how are you going to know which one's the cause of it if you're getting two at the same time? That's irresponsible. Travis Kelsey is one of the biggest pieces of shit of all time. The fact that he's advising people to do that, you know he's not doing it. He's just telling people to do it because he's getting paid off and bought for by Pfizer. It's disgusting. And how much do you think Taylor Swift has this? Because Taylor, Taylor Swift is sort of the darling of the left. Dude, yeah. this guy won two Super Bowls. Yep. He seems like a rugged, badass dude, you know, arguably the greatest tight end playing today. Uh, how much is the left, the narrative, oh. the Taylor Swift coming yeah. into Travis Kelsey and infusing their ideology on him, you think? Oh, yeah, 100%. But, that you know, that's a fake relationship. That's just the left putting these two powerful figures together so they can be role models and, and teach these nasty things to kids uh, of today. You know, that it looks, you can tell that the left is just going after the most famous people they can, the athletes, celebrities, entertainers, and they're just getting them to shove their narrative down these kids' throats. Wait, yeah. what? Guys, I just searched something right now based on what you just said. Okay, I, I, if you don't know the answer, I'm really curious to know what you're going to say. <laughs> what do you think he got paid for from Pfizer for this commercial? Hundred million? No, 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 no one's no. gonna pay that kind of money. I'm saying, no. I'm saying for for no, the no, whole no. campaign. Let me no, tell you something. No. For a hundred million, no. I'm fucking jabbing everything. But, but hear Pfizer's me out. No, hear me out. Typically, you get a cost like half a million bucks, yeah. a million yeah. bucks. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you think he got paid for that? Okay, now that's like that was five million. What do you think? I, that's a lot. I, I've not heard of five million dollar deals for a Travis Kelsey. Yeah. What do you think I paid for that? I mean, listen, for you to go around and be the the spokesperson for Pfizer and you're the face of the NFL and you're dating Taylor Swift. How much? Yeah. Whatever number you like, dude, I would give it to him. Hold I, this number I, up, right? I'd go I ten you, million dollars. Twenty million. Are you million? kidding me? Oh wow. God. Did you guys know this? I, just, I had I no know idea. This. I just Googled it right. It makes According sense. to a report from Andrew Pitt Cash, wow. Travis Kelsey was offered a strong incentive to take part of the Pfizer promotion, the Kansas City Star. Is stated to stated to have made a massive twenty million dollars wow. from yeah. the advertisement. Oh, weird! Oh my God, I had no yeah. clue. And then think about this, yeah. and you nailed it. I believe Holy it. Shit. But yo, look, look at this, it. look at this tactic. And I said wow. this yesterday. You got to tip your hats to, to Democrats. They recruit his ass. They make them date. She's a, a Democrat. You wait in six months. Guess what she's gonna say to all her? What are they called? Swifties. Her, her Swifties. Hey guys. If Donald Trump makes it, hope to God, don't vote. They're evil. Vote for whoever, Newsom or whoever. Do you know how many how influential her voice is going to be One for a vote? Percent. Yeah. And that's the tactic. Get nine jabs and vote for the left. They're not stupid. Let me tell you something. That's money well Let me tell you something. You know, I, I would David. never mess with the UFC. Those guys are badasses. You do not want to mess with the Swifty. Yeah, mean, no those shit. Guys, so check this out. <laughs> look, look, look at this. Go, go, go on the article and go a little lore. Watch this here. Go a little lore. 
Okay, zoom in right there on the top the top tweet. On the top tweet, right above it. Keep going. No, no, the other way. The other way. So Kelsey typically makes $5 million a year from endorsements and $14 million salary. These endorsements are Nike, Tide, T-Mobile, Old Spice, Walgreens, McDonald's, Papa John's, Sleep Number, and Dick's Sporting Goods. One company, Pfizer, paid them Yo. four times the amount of all of those big companies paid them. So, oh, my gosh, I don't like that. Man, $20 million bucks? Yeah. Uh, and this, this is a, no, no, this is exactly why yeah. when I talk to Vivek and RFK, I say somebody as a president, you have to take, you have to not allow big pharma to pay this type of money put for people because you're going to be tempted to, like he just said what? He said, I'll take $100 million. Even Adam's like, I'll take $100 million for this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but imagine how many other kids are sitting there saying, yeah, that's my guy. He's dating Taylor Swift. I'll take the vaccine. I'll do this. I'll do that. And what are the effects on that? Myocarditis. <laughs> and let, Myocarditis. Let, let's kid. say it's one in a thousand. Let's say it's one in ten thousand. Let's say it's one in a hundred thousand. You're okay with that? Yeah. I don't know about that, man. Twenty million bucks. I, I thought it was honesty. I thought the number was going to be a million to two and a half million max. When I saw that commercial, that I thought it was a spoof. Crazy number. Come on, Kobe. When I saw that commercial, wow. I'm like, this is a comedy spoof. Well, I, you Jab bite yourself twice. Get out of here. By the way, the reason I even know about this is because you know who called him out initially was Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. yeah. On the Pat was, McAfee show. Yeah. But let me tell you something. I believe in free market capitalism. Make your decisions. If you want online, you want to go basically literally sell out to Big Pharma and take your $20 million. No. You do what you got to do, Travis. No. But we have the right to be like, uh-uh, motherfucker. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. that's hold not. On. Like, I'm, I, I'm so grateful that people even found this. Oh, 20 well, million yeah. bucks. He made five million. Go back to those brands way, again, We Rob? don't know about this. How is yeah. this not public exactly. information? Yeah. I, we were, we were These are some of the day. bigger, yeah. biggest brands in the world. Nike, wow. Tide, T-Mobile, Old Spice, Walgreens, McDonald's. I mean, this is massive. Billion-dollar marketing well, yeah, budgets. Hold on. Why, why, All of that why, does not equal why, what Pfizer why, did. Why, why, even, why even play football for $14 million a year? The hell with getting a concussion and getting your brain messed up, just keep saying, hey, next year, be like, hey, guys, get three more jabs, $20 million a year. Why are you playing football? So, Not a year for one by commercial. The way, so, yeah. by the way, you know some of the guys in, in, in all sports watch this, and, you know, the, we, we talk to these guys. You know some of the names. We won't say publicly, but you know what they're thinking right now? They're yeah. probably calling their manager. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Hey, you know, is, are there any make this commercials? <laughs> <laughs> but think, think about how tarnished Pfizer's brand is that whatever their marketing budget was before, they need to double it, triple it, 10 exit. Prior to what? whatever happened with COVID, if they called Pfizer, he's like, yeah, for a half a million bucks, eh, whatever. Twenty million dollars. They come knocking down your door. For one commercial, and they throw in a free Swifty CD. Dude, you're gonna fucking. By the way, that's twenty. You're gonna million? consider that. That's tech. twenty million for one, yeah. like half a day of work. Is for all a campaign, was, yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. Look, the, 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 I'm telling you, I want one law for president to push. Mm -hmm. Hundred out of all the countries in the world, nearly two hundred countries in the world, only two allow big pharma to advertise. We've talked about this a number of times. Yeah. It's U.S. and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. We just need one president come in and say, "Hey, big pharma." You can no longer pay Travis Kelsey 20 million bucks to do something like this. Not Big Pharma, okay? Well, that's not fair. Don't you believe in capitalism? If you believe in the capitalism, you believe in let cigarettes be sold on, you yeah. know, yeah. how come cigarettes don't do advertisement? How come tobacco? There's a lot of companies that can't do advertisement on TV. I that's think these funny. guys, after COVID, have proven they don't, they should not have the free for all to throw money at everybody. I say go advertise. Twenty million. That's bucks. bananas. That's gaslighting. One people. commercial. You know he's not really actually taking two jabs. I guess talks about health is his cornerstone of of his career. You know the things he puts in his body for for his diet. You know his his work ethic in the in the gym, lifting weights. Those are the things. That, but they're trying to brainwash these kids. Like, oh, take the jab. This is what's going to make you healthy. This is what's going to make you a star NFL player. So that that's gaslighting. Let the me public. ask you, bro. Let me ask you a question. What's your vibes? If we go out and we're watching, you know, a uh, uh, we're watching, we're hanging out at the play, playing cards, and Kelsey's a neighbor, he comes. Him and his brother. Would you get the vibes of them being conservatives or liberals? I get Just, conservative vibes. I get conservative vibes. I do too. Yeah, Me too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The brother's like, a, you know, him and his wife, they, they're doing family the way they were raised. I get conservative vibes. Yeah. For but sure. For 20 million bucks, you'll be a Democrat soul. for a day. You're yep. sell, yeah, but you're selling your soul. 20 million bucks. Hey, man. Selling Everyone soul, has no, a price. I disagree. No, 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 I disagree. Everyone ready, has ready a price. Ready for this? Ask him. I ask disagree. him if, if for, for 50 million, would you do that commercial? No, I wouldn't do that for any million. Bingo. You can't do that. You can't buy you me. Can't I'm not. Adam, night. Adam you, you know, Adam, Adam, let me, let me, you've said this a number of times. Yeah. Okay, you got everybody's a price? Let me ask a question. I asked Bradley Martin. You ready? Yeah. 
for how much money will you cut your dangling off and no, be transgender? No. no. Everybody's got a price, though. Go no, ahead. No. For how much money? $200 million? Hang on a second. Stay on this topic. Listen, Would you do it for a billion bucks? I'm cutting off any limbs. Would no. you do it for a billion bucks? I'll cut my uh, left pinky toe off, no doubt. But do you understand? So yeah, when you say ever... everybody has a price, they don't have a price. There's, how about just, this? How about this? It just this? means... The majority, the vast majority no, of people they, do have a price. They don't have a price. But hear me out for a yeah. second. It just means this is not a hill you want to die on. For you, yeah. you're like, hey, SauceCast, a million dollars Pfizer, I'll take it. Maybe you would take that sponsorship, right? Not enough, but okay. Okay, but what I'm saying yeah. is, but maybe you would take it for, and I don't know if you're going to get $20 million pull because you don't have that kind of pull that Kelsey has. You're yeah, not I mean, dating Travis, Taylor Swift. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but all I'm saying to you is Taylor? maybe you'll say I'll take the million bucks because mm -hmm. to you, I don't give a shit. What's the big deal? I've taken flu shots. I've taken this. When I travel, I have to take this shot, that shot. But there are people that wouldn't take it if you gave them all the money in the world. There are people literally that wouldn't take it. That, even that statement, everybody has a price tag, gets the populace to believe, well, I have a price tag. No, I don't think that's the right mindset to think everybody has a price tag. You may in certain areas you don't give a shit about, but I think you have to have more you know, certain values and principles that you're not willing to compromise. It's disappointing because I like his play, I actually like him as a guy, and I like him and his brother. I like the fact that they are, you know, they seem like the type of guy you would actually enjoy their company. You know what I'm saying? Kelsey's don't give me the vibe of, like, you wouldn't enjoy their company, snobby people. Uh, they give me the Gronkowski vibe, right? It's just you're probably fun to party with them. Maybe not his brother was a good guy to party with, but he comes across as a guy that you'd want to party with. I'll but tell you. 20 I, million bucks. Wow. I'll give you a quick response, and this is why I say everyone has a price. Um. I firmly believe that I don't think Travis Kelsey is aligned with whatever this narrative is on the left. But when they come to you, you've been in these spotlights before. You've probably been approached by all sorts of people. They're like, Travis Kelsey, you know, two years ago, nobody knew your freaking name. Now you've won two Super Bowls. Let's make a deal, buddy. What you got in mind? All right, well. Your soul. Uh, how would you like to be the most famous player in the NFL? What? What do you mean? Yeah. Tom Brady's retired, you know. There's someone else that can pick up the mantle. How about we throw in $20 million to shoot one commercial? All right, go on. What's it for? Pfizer? I don't know about that. How about we'll make it a little uh, sweeter for you? Uh, name the biggest, hottest pop star in the world that maybe you'd want to be seen out with constantly. Cardi B. No, 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 <laughs> Cardi. Okay. You know, maybe Taylor Swift shows yeah. up to your... Uh, Arrowhead Stadium for a game randomly, and you guys maybe you guys fall in love by you know accident. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe this happens. Maybe you're on the co cover of People. Maybe you're the biggest show in the world. Just maybe Travis Kelsey. At some point, even Travis Kelsey, who's a multi-millionaire, I think he's got a forty, fifty million, million dollar net worth. He ain't no slouch. Even he has a price. So that's my point here: is that when I say everybody has a price, maybe it's not you're, literally you're not making, everybody. You're not making sense. But what I'm saying is, for the right. Deal, You're not like even some like is it? And, and, and well, I'm the, Adam, and you know, I, I you think know, it validated the one. My point you, here is that you, even Travis Kelsey is willing to but, sell out. What I'm saying for the you, money, for no, the fame, for the chick, no, no. all that. For for what though? For this hill, it's not an important hill to him. What, what do you think, Kobe? When it comes down to this, everybody's got a price. Like if yeah, if these guys called you with a fat check, what check would you say yes to? There's not a check I would say yes to. You know. For me, and I, I know that everybody doesn't have a price because some people have a conscience. And to have that on your conscience living every day that you're advising people that this is healthy and this is what you should do for your body when people are dying by the masses from heart attacks. I mean, look at LeBron John's James' son. Did he have, like, cardiac arrest at LeBron. 17 years old? 17-year-old little, you know, super athlete in the James family having cardiac arrest? Crazy. Like, that's unheard of. You yeah. never heard about yeah. that 10, yeah. 20 years ago before these jabs came out. So no amount of money... Am I going to be able to live with and, and feel good about myself? Like, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I go to bed thinking, man, I'm just fooling everybody in, in America right now. I'm, I'm leading them down a path of destruction. I, I just couldn't live with myself with that. There's no amount of money. I already have enough money where I, where I came from. A million dollars was going to set me up for life. So, you know, I, there, there's no amount of money. Well, Colby, I, you can't me, buy and pay let, me. let me ask you this. You're a myself. man of principle, no doubt. Knowing what you know, professional athletes, even UFC, for the, that amount of money, life-changing for most guys how many people are at least taking that call and being like all right i'll listen to what you guys got to say fill in the blank you're saying in sponsor. ufc in okay, ufc or question. even in professional sports you're you're saying that you wouldn't do it whatever the number is 
These guys get paid 50 grand a fight to get their face yeah. fucking mashed in. You're right. They're calling you for $20 million. How many guys are picking up that phone? Oh, yeah, every single one. Not, you know, nine out of ten. That's my point. You're, yeah, but that's in the UFC where they don't make, you know, paychecks like in the NFL. Yeah. In the NFL, you know, minimum wage, those guys that sit on the bench are making a million yeah. a year. So, you know, you could be a field goal kicker and you're making three to five million a year. So that's mm -hmm. not enough money. Like what? But the reality is most greedy? NFL players are out of the league broke within three to five years. That's the that's the NFL. And that's the reality yeah. of it. NBA, I think it's five years plus. Yeah. But these guys, what they need to understand is, the, I mean, you know, you're 35. You're still in the you know prime of your career. Most guys, by the time they're 30, they're done. Zero more money ever to be made in their entire life. Yeah. OK. And that's the reality of an athlete. It's kind of like a hot model. It's like by the time you're 30. <laughs> Cut it off. Yeah. So you got to make it now, because if Travis Kelsey doesn't do this thing now, nobody's going to be thinking about Travis in Kelsey. UFC, in UFC, thirty-five is not prime. So you, you, no, he, he. I'm saying Colby. No, I'm not saying you. I'm not talking yeah, Colby. I'm, I'm saying most Uf guys are done by thirty. Right. In any sport. Right. You're talking about in the other sport. In right. any sport. Yeah. yeah so. For sure. So. So. Yeah. I mean, look again. It's what hill. Like for example, Khabib. You know what everybody learned about Khabib during UFC? To him, number one is not money. It's religion. Oh, there's no question about yeah. it, right? And and everybody learned. Like, this is not an yeah. act. Yeah. yeah, He's not trying to sell tickets. Guess right. what? Say something about my religion, my country, and my family one on more the cage. time. Yeah. I swear to God. Say it one more time. Look what I'm going to do to you, right? right? Mm -hmm. and guess what? You're like, oh, shit. This guy's not playing, yeah. right? Connor found out. You know, it's okay. I thought it was just selling tickets and all this other stuff. No. Uh, to some, they're like, I don't give a shit. I'll take the vaccine. And by the way, keep in mind. Up until we had kids, dude, I've, I've probably been vaccinated more than anybody at this table. No, probably you and I. Me and you and I probably have the, the most vaccines. Anthrax, I got every dude, every freaking week in the army. They were the giving us something new. Yeah. We were yeah. every week. You had your those papers. Bombs. We would get these air guns, guns, bow. and we 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 would. They would tell us they're like, just so you know, your military property for the contract that you signed. Yeah, that's what GI stands and you would for. Go, government Pfft. issue. Yeah. Pfft. 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 And you move a little bit, it's a scar, right? Yeah. You remember those days? Shit, what was that all about? So you're like, hey, all I want you to, I want to tell you is, don't flinch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And, and, and Pat, did you have a choice? No, I didn't Hell have a no, choice. Okay. Okay. Government, GI, yeah. For and, government and, and, by the way, yeah. not only did I not have a choice, more importantly, I didn't give a shit. Yeah, that's wow. what I'm trying to tell you. I'm 18. Yeah. I'm 19. I don't give a shit. Like, what am I worried yeah. about? I'm not sitting there being educated about it. But then all of a sudden, when it's no longer about your life, when you have a kid. You look at everything in a different way. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a kid, all you're trying to do is make money and like have some kind of influence, power, freedom, control that you can, you know, do whatever things you want to do. Once you have kids and friends say, hey, did you guys do this? No, we didn't do it. Here's why. Read this pamphlet. Oh, shit, babe. What are we going to do with oh, that? So how about this? What are you guys going to do when it comes on to it? What are you going to do with this? How are you going to handle circumstances? These are all decisions that all of a sudden now you have to make. You didn't think about that until you have kids. So. I understand when you're single, no kids, not married. Yeah, I'll take it and I'll say, do, do stuff with the money. But you're getting other guys that are watching the shit that may be saying, if he's taking it, I'll take it as well. Anyways, we don't need to stay here. We just found out this guy made $20 million bucks off of Pfizer. Yeah. Okay. Good, and I, yeah. good I, selling no poison. Good, good selling selling poison. By the way, so, so uh, Kobe, what's next with you? Like right now, <clears throat> what are you thinking? Are you thinking... At this point, with fight, where uh, I think you ask for a rematch, right? You want to have a rematch with Leon, so you're yeah. thinking a rematch with him. Uh, uh, is that the main focus you have to get him to want to do a rematch? I mean, not to get him to get the UFC on board that they need to sell this rematch. They they're gonna see what, that my doctor tells them that literally my foot was broken within the first minute of the fight, and you know I I, I outlanded him in strikes. I doubled his strike count. You know, like I I feel like I had a. a I thought I feel like I won the fight, so that's all. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win the fight. If I have to win ten more fights to get back to him, that's how hungry mm -hmm. I'm. I'm not like one of these guys like Zion Will Williamson where he gets a contract and he just loses his motivation. You know, he he already got paid. He's he's not hungry. No amount of money money is gonna take away my hunger and passion and drive for this sport and and for the platform that I love. You know, my platform stands for first responders, stands for military, stands for the Trump, it stands for the troops. So I'm gonna keep fighting with those guys on my back and I'm not done yet. They they could say whatever 
whatever they want. They could say, oh, I'm past my prime. I'm not past my prime, dude. I, I'm just hitting my prime because I took good care of my body. I didn't spar hard. I didn't, you know, go get my, my hit, head hit recklessly. Or I've never been knocked out. So, you know, like, I'm just getting started in my career, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep fighting, and, Bro, and I want that rematch. What did Zion do to you? Like, you brought in <laughs> Zion. Like, that was yeah. such a – I was <laughs> – I mean, I'm just saying he's one of those lazy, undisciplined athletes. Oh, he's one of those guys, like, yeah. they get these paychecks, and, and – they just lose their hunger. They, you know, they just look at how much weight he's gained. The guy just—I mean, he's a flat, fat slob. You know? So he didn't lose his hunger. That's yeah. the one thing he didn't lose. It was the yeah, he didn't lose his hunger. Point. Yeah, bad, bad, point. bad analogy. He's got that Chris Christie and, and issue. He's got a pretty yeah. good DM game. He's DMing everybody nowadays. He's, he's yeah, apparently he wants to get. He wants to be the go ahead of Sean Camp and Brian McKnight. But that's a, that's a different conversation <laughs> that we brought those two guys up. So, but but going going back to this with the you know wanting to come back and fight for you. After the, uh, the world is done with, after the world of UFC is done with, are you thinking what you're going to be doing? Like, are you, you know, because right after all these sports, it's typically going to be specifically UFC. The guys that don't have personalities, man, they don't know how to make money. Yeah. They don't have any options on how to make money. It's true. Where do I go to? Literally, the only thing you yeah. can do is be an instructor somewhere making 100 bucks, 200 bucks an hour. You're training other people if yeah. you can get paid that, right? True. But those that have a personality, do you see... You know, I you know, sitting next to Joe, like you, you're commentating on stories. Do you see, kind of maybe your dedication to the game? You're gonna open up your own commenting gym and train. What do you see happening to you after UFC? Have you thought about that? I haven't thought about it because I'm still 100 percent in the UFC, <clears throat> and I I feel like you know when you start putting that one foot out and start thinking about what's next, then you should probably retire. You're not still completely invested into fighting. So I still know I'm one of the best fighters in the world. You know, I just went five rounds with the, with the supposed champion, you know, who's who who was supposed to just completely decimate me, and it was a very competitive fight. Could have went either way. So, you know, I know that I am more than just a fighter, though. I'm not just a fighter that shows up and fights in in these in in the octagon. That's not all I can do. You know, I'm smarter than that. I can use my mind and I have intellect to be able to navigate the waters and get me where I want to go in life. But I haven't thought about it. I do want to get into politics one day because I want to fight for what I believe in. You know, I want to get into Congress, maybe Senate, maybe oh, something shit. like that. Maybe be the governor of Florida. That would be my ultimate dream, to be the governor of this state. Get out of here. I'd vote for yeah. you. Really? Yeah, so you want to sure. be a governor of Florida? I do. You wow. Know, I, those are my think, dreams. Uh, Interesting. So what do you, what do you yeah. think about the, uh, Matt Gates? A lot of people are saying Matt Gates could be the next governor of Florida after DeSantis. Yeah. I, you know, I think Matt's he's a great personality. He's a very smart-witted guy. And, you know, he's had... You know, there's definitely some things that I've seen him vote on that I didn't completely agree with, but, you know, no one's perfect. So you actually follow this stuff. You actually follow the, the political stuff. How, how much do you yeah. follow? How intently are you following issues? Yeah, I mean, issues not, I mean, you know, I, I'll check X and I, and I get all my issues there because I can't check the fake news. We know the fake news will try and tell you that the world's burning and that, uh, you know, that everything is is fine you know and just to live live your life normally and not worry about inflation hitting skyrocketing prices or our border being completely open and terrorists coming through it every single day so you know i pay attention but i'm also like you know i don't want to start going full in until my career is over and i can dedicate my whole time to it governor, mm. governor covington you know you know Dude, you i know, love that by the way, you know have we have, has there ever, have has there ever been an MMA professional fighter running for high levels of office? Well, has that ever happened? No, no. But Jesse Ventura so. was a governor, but he was a wrestler. Yeah. But like with with him, no, because like he, I can imagine you like debating. You're like and like you like cameras are off, and you're like, I will fuck you up. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> by the way, sure. the line ends up with. Sure. And by the way, if you have a problem with me, we can handle it. <laughs> yeah, you want to go outside? Let's <laughs> go outside. Let's go. Hell There's yeah. an element of that. What that about? Would be you're you're in Florida, you know. You're you're obviously on on Team Trump, uh, Governor DeSantis. I assume you voted for him. Um, every, it, you didn't vote for DeSantis. No, I didn't vote for DeSantis. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, that was in 2022. Um, what are your thoughts on his his situation with Trump these days? He was super oh, close man. to them in the polls. Now it's a landslide. Do you think MAGA would ever get behind DeSantis? What are you, what's your anticipation there? No, MAGA never forgets, you know, we, once you expose yourself for being a certain way, he, he's an establishment puppy, you know, he's, he's sponsored by George Soros. I mean, the guy's an unloyal and unfaithful human being. Let me, like, if it wasn't for Donald Trump endorsing him for governor of Florida, he would never be the Florida governor. Mm -hmm. So for him to try and come run against Trump when he had no chance from the start is just the most despicable thing alive. Like, you you have the rest of your life. This is Trump's last shot to save America. He's the last thing that's standing between communism and capitalism. 
Donald Trump is loves this country more than he loves his own money, like in his own business and his own life and his own family. Like, why couldn't he just step aside and let Trump have this last hoorah? You know, like he's got the rest of his life to to run for politics. So it just shows he's an unloyal, unfaithful person. And and MAGA will never forget what he's done to to Trump and try and throw him under the bus. And the fact that he's not condemning Colorado for taking yeah. Trump off the ballot that just shows how dangerous and and just how bad of a person he is like you think that's okay that's unconstitutional that's that's not that's not a democracy that's straight up communism that's straight up dictatorship and the fact that he's not condemning it just shows what type of person he is and we'll never forget that are you following the primaries you see what's going on with DeSantis, nikki vivek chris christie somehow still there um trump hasn't showed up yet what are your thoughts on what's going on with the primaries and if trump somehow wasn't the candidate in some other life who would you, would you, what are your thoughts on Vivek? What are your thoughts on Nikki? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think Trump has run away with the primary. There is no primary. It's, it's the party of Trump. So, you know, he's he's going to, it's it's a landslide. He's beating Biden in the polls, and that's why they're trying to find every different way to take him off the ballots because they know they can't beat him that's fair crazy. up. Yeah. You know, they, they know that he's a threat and, and that they can't stop him. So, you know, he, he's the last thing that stands between us and this being a full out tyrannical government. So, you know, if if Trump wasn't on the ballot, say, but he, you know, he's going to win this nomination. He's going to make America great again. But if he wasn't, you know, I like the things that Vivek's saying. I think he stands for truth. I like that he's backing Trump and, you know, he's condemning, you know, Colorado taking him off the ballot because that's that's unconstitutional. That's not democracy. So, you know, I think Vivek's doing a great job. Smart guy. He's a you know, tech guy. He's made a lot of money. He's done good business. And that's what we need. We don't need these political figures that talk so politically. Oh, everything has to be politically perfect. No, we need these smart business people that understand how business works because that's what's going to help America. Stop sending all our money out of the country. Let's put America first again. No one's done that. You know, they're trying to destroy this country. They want this country to be rotting. You know, and and a lot of people would be letting this country rot and just enjoy the money on the sidelines, but not Trump. He he cares about this country more than he cares about life itself, and he's willing to put himself in the fire. And he's the biggest fighter America's ever had. He's going to bite down on his mouthpiece. He's going to come out here fighting, and he's going to take down the swamp. God bless Donald Trump. Rob, I just sent you a video. If you can pull this video up, uh, this is the part where DeSantis is being asked, uh, about Vivek's pledge, like, hey, here's what Vivek's doing. What do you want to do? Are you willing to agree to this? And a lot of people are saying this is a bad look, but I wonder what you guys think about this. Go ahead and play this clip. And real quick, fellow GOP 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy saying he will remove himself from the Colorado ballot unless Trump's eligibility is restored. Would you do the same? No, I think that's just playing into the left. Um, I think the case will get overturned by the Supreme Court, but I've qualified for all the ballots. I'm competing in all the states, and I'm going to accumulate the delegates necessary. That's the whole name of the game in this situation. But I do anticipate that that decision was political and will get reversed. What do you think about the answer? All right. What do you think about the answer? What do you think about that when you hear him saying? He's not even answering. He's kind of, he's looping around it. And he's, he's not showing whether he stands up and supports that and, be, and believes that's fair or not. He doesn't give an answer. And that, that's kind of what Ron does. He doesn't really give straight answers. He kind of beats around the answer to try and appease to his handlers, the people that are his donors and paying him all this money. You know, the guy's, he's sold out to the left now. Everybody can see that he's being You weaponized. think he's sold out to the left? I think so. I've I seen some of his biggest donors were George Soros, George Soros affiliates. So you have to look into that. I'm DeSantis pretty... backed by Soros? That's the first yeah. time I've heard that. Well, by the affiliates, he's saying. I'm Who's some, that? Some affiliates, some donors of, of Soros have gone in and infiltrated uh, DeSantis' camp. And, and uh, who else? I haven't heard of that yet. Uh, uh, DeSantis plans Wall Street fundraiser with former Soros executive. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Weird. Interesting. Wow. So, and, and, and Breaking some news here, yeah, buddy. Good yeah. fundraiser you know, with Walter Exec, including former, you know, just former like partner. Truth is a force of nature. Yeah. You know? and, and, so, and so, Kobe, like, when, and, we, and he mentioned uh, Vivek, and you said, you know, tech guy. and Because, I mean, Vivek is taking a page out of, you know, Trump's book. Like, he's this guy, like, and we, we've talked about this before. He kind of came out the gates. Kobe, he was chill. He wasn't going hard. And then by the what? The third? Third debate, he's trashing everybody we just saw him um what, what was it, what was the thing pat that made uh van jones shiver or or shake 
What was that one, Rob? Do you, uh, whatever it was, Kobe, was he, it, he I said. I think it was, it was when he went after that Ronna McDaniel and the GOP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Called, yeah, yeah. Out, went, called he, out to he her face. He went after them and, went out and, 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 uh, and, and uh, they came after him. And Van Jones is like, oh, I, I was shaking. But that's the type of attitude. And I think we talked about this. Pat, if you don't mind, can we, can no, no, we play? Yeah, because it. so um, play what well, Van Jones play? said, and then play Vivek responding to it. Yeah, well, can we, do, do you have? Are we going to show Vivek doing the? Oh yeah, the response. Yeah, this is what he said. This is what Van Jones said about uh, Vivek. And the smug, condescending way that he just spews this poison out yeah. is very, very dangerous because he won't stop Trump, but he's going to outlive Trump by about fifty years. And you're watching the rise of an American demagogue. She's that cute. is a very, very despicable person. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, literally, I, I, was, I was shaking <laughs> listening to him talk because shaking. a lot of people don't know that is one step away from Nazi propaganda coming out of oh his mouth. Okay, gosh. like from, but, from an Indian, yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, like, yeah. that's ridiculous. And, and, then, and then this is his response. This is Vivek's response. So I say that on that last debate stage to a bunch of Republicans that are shaking in their boots. These are the things you're not supposed to say in the Republican Party even today. And then you get the mainstream media. You got this character Van Jones on CNN afterwards saying, this is the rise of an American demagogue who's going to live 50 years longer than Trump. This is dangerous. I am shaking. That's what he says. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. Wow. <laughs> I've never really heard of a better person. Yeah, 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 that's amazing. Just yeah. shut the fuck up. <laughs> wow. Now, now, hold on. I want to ask him. Jones Cole, I want to ask you, but we talked about this in the, in the prep a couple days ago, Patrick. Would it, you did it. You're not a fan of that. You're not a fan of Vivek going, like, as a presidential candidate, you're not a fan of that. I, I don't know. I think, <clears throat> I think there's a difference. Vivek's already making so many strides uh, on how much he's come up. Yes, you know, two days ago, he made the most viral video on Twi on X for a single day. He had 150,000, 200,000 likes. That thing got 10, 15 million views when he's saying, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be removing myself from the Colorado, and I'm pledging and I'm challenging my peers, you know, Haley and all these other guys to do the same as well. Where's it at now? Can you, uh, 20 million views. Six, Look at that. 16.8 million views, 200,000 likes. You know, he's just sitting there from his, you know, uh, RV saying this. I don't think a presidential candidate should get up there and saying what he said. UFC, MMA, all the other stuff, fine. I don't know if a presidential candidate should go up there and say something like that. You know, I can see how it could rally a young audience if you're speaking to a private young audience. But you have to know everything you say, someone's going to see it. Yeah. In, today's, in today's climate, nobody gives a shit anymore when you're cursing. It's no longer what it was 20 years ago. So I get that part. It's been dehumanize like it's no longer as it's been desensitized than what it was before i still don't don't like him saying it you don't you don't like and and I, I the only reason i disagree is because at what point and i know you're gonna agree like enough is enough trump is gonna god willing for these four years but when he's done we're this is this is our our next product i'm thinking of the future but it's like if he's a future it's like we the left and they're, they're starting it again with him how long are we going to let them get away with it? Calling somebody evil. Let me explain something to you, bro. This is, what, this is what he said. And I'm tired of this acting presidential. So what's acting presidential? All the illegal shit that they do. I, I like it because think about this. If somebody said this to you, Kobe, um, you're dangerous, smug, condescending. You spew poison. You're an American demagogue. You're a despicable person. Dude, we've, we've hung out with this guy. This saying despicable, he's a freaking family, man. It's <laughs> shitty. And that he's speaking one step away from Nazi propaganda. You know what you say to that? Shut the fuck up. That's what... I don't think so. I disagree. You disagree, but... And let me tell you why. God. I mean, what you're saying will, will gain you some fans on what you're saying here. So it's a nice thing for people to say, that's why I love Vinny and da 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 and make you feel good about it. Yeah. But that's not what leaders do. Yeah. A leader sits there and says, you could give the same message without having to say that on that platform. Because that message, again, I've been in a lot of rooms where I've gotten up and given a talk and I've gotten the, hey, bro, great job, dog. And hey, hey. And I'm like, shit, but I lost those two clients. Mm. And I lost that person's that the most loyal person that comes with me, family guy, Christian guy that's doing this. Damn, I shouldn't have used those words. And if you're not, if you consider yourself wanting to be a leader amongst leaders, who are you leading? You're leading other leaders, okay? This is not leading other leaders. If you do it once, twice, three times, fine. Don't fall for the temptation. I just hope this doesn't become a <clears throat> this doesn't become a trend where we're hearing it next week 
and an interview and in a podcast and a this and a you that think and a this. You, you think he'd be a, a, a multiple occasion saying the F word or was it because TP, he was at the America Fest and younger crowd and Vinny, or just you've been around it. me. You've heard me curse. It's not like I Rarely. curse. I'm not sitting here yeah. telling you I don't Yeah. or I do. You know, when you first came to us, your brand was a different brand. 100%. When you were cr- content, you were kind of like, what are you doing? Yeah. You don't need to. You don't need to do this stuff to make people laugh. Yeah. Just because because sometimes here's sometimes if you're not too careful, your reputation is what everybody else says your reputation is. And you stay loyal to what other people keep saying you are. And that's a uh, it, it, you're in a, you're you're arrested. You're in a prison. You're in a what do you call it? You're like a, a spider web that's got a hold of you. And then it could be like you're the clown, you're the fighter, you're the gangster, you're the you're the thief, you're the bully, you're the this, you're the that, and you're like, dude, that was when I was 18 years old. That was when I was 32. I'm 45 years old. No, I'm not that anymore. You know, that's when I was that. And you have to find a way to not fall for that trap. There's an audience that wants him to say this, but who is that audience? The two percent, the eight percent, the thirteen percent. What about the other side that you needed? No. We, you, you, one time, fine, means you're capable of losing your shit. means you're human, human being. Mm-hmm. Totally fine. If this becomes the brand moving forward, I don't – Trump said it a couple times on stage, and I like it when he said rarely, it a couple times. Yeah, rarely. I actually like it yeah. when he said it a couple times. I just don't think it has to be consistent. Oh, yeah, I, I, and I hope it doesn't become yeah, consistent. I, I, I yeah. agree. What I'm saying is, though, think about what was said about him. I'm not gonna lie to you. I probably would have gone even worse. But that's why you yeah. you got to be careful though, yeah, because if you if you're if you're trying to be a president, we can say if that would have done it to me, I would have done such and such. Okay. Before I having a daughter, my biggest fear was what am I gonna do when I have a daughter and a guy is gonna hook up with my daughter and date my daughter and I'm sleeping at night and they're still at the movies and as a man, your creative mind is going where. Yeah, of course. Think about that, of right? Of course. So first place you go to, I'm going to pull off a Will Smith, and, hey, you're going to come to the house, and it's going to be like, hey, <laughs> ba- ba- you like man? You ever been with a man? You want to, right? Yeah. You know, Will Smith comes out and is that with you. You know, which uh, movie is this, by uh, the way? Bad Boys. The, bad, yeah, boys bad Boys 2, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike Lowe. I'm going like, yeah. to have to have somebody come out there and you do this like with you. You look like you're 17. Yeah. yeah. You look like you're 30. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so are you going to – and then eventually you're like, well, if you raise them well, you show them love, you give them an example, and, and they get to choose. They're going to have their heart broken at some point or another. You have to kind of work with that, right? But if you want to be that tough guy gangster beating everybody up for the rest of your life, your upside is limited. So, yes, I get what you're saying. I understand it. It's exciting. But look at this. That comment he said didn't go viral, and look at this comment, 20 million. Yeah. You know why? Because this made sense. This made sense. He didn't curse one time. Mm-hmm. He didn't say any. This makes sense, and people listen to it to the point where he's cornering DeSantis, to end, and he knows what DeSantis is going to say. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? He yeah. knows they're going to go to DeSantis, and he's going to be asked that question, and DeSantis is going to say no, and MAGA is going to see it. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Do this. He can outschool his peers staying in this mode, yeah. not in the other mode. The other mode is temptation. Again, I could be wrong. It's my opinion. That's all I'm saying. If you see yourself as a leader amongst leaders, you have to pump the brakes when it comes down to certain approaches you take. Yeah, I Co- think, Kobe, what do you think? I mean, I think, you know, they're pulling nasty things out of their playbook. You know, the things that they're doing, taking him off a ballot for nothing he was ever even convicted of. This is just, you know, not even a crime that he ever did. And so... This is this is this is terrible behavior. So I think the gloves are coming off, and there's no more fair fight. We can't be nice. We need to be stern. We need to be, you know, upfront. I mean, you look at Elon the way he went after the guys that were pulling back all those funds off of X, and he said, "What do he say? Get the fuck out of here! Or, go, fuck go fuck yourself! Fuck yourself. yourself! You know, like I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally yeah. okay with that. He's not running for a president. That's, it. that's the only know, difference. It's different, you know. So. I do feel like you're probably right, you know, when you're in that political position, running for a presidential position, like, you still need to make middle America happy, and middle America, you know, they don't want people cussing and and doing those types of things, because that's not a good example for their kids, so, yeah, there's ways that he could come across a lot stronger without having to say that, so I do agree on that front, but we also, we're not playing fair anymore, they're not playing by the rules, you know, they've opened up borders, and they never will. That's our job. Let us do it. You don't need to do that, okay? 
you know, I was uh, I was on whose show was that? A guy asked me a question. He says, you got advice for Trump. What would you give him? I'm like, dude, you don't give advice to a guy like that. You know, yeah. when you make it at that level, he's yeah. not taking. But he is a what do you mean guy. He takes a lot of it. So Charlie Kirk asked me this question at the event, Turning Point USA, when I'm doing his podcast last week. I said, the only thing I would say is the following. Here's what I would say. When you're a boss, you're Lucky Luciano. When you are, you know, Roger Godell, okay, of NFL. When you are Dana White. When you are, go to the bosses. The boss amongst bosses, okay. You're going to have more enemies than anybody else. You're already dealing with your kid issues, your family issues, your personal health issues that nobody knows about. Your marriage, you got so much other shit you're dealing with that no one knows about. And you can't ever talk about that with anybody else because nobody gives a shit, quite frankly. It's like, that's your problem. Handle your problem. But if you're going to be a boss amongst bosses, you list out your enemies, 50 of them. Trump's got thousands. <laughs> but let's just say you list out your top 50 enemies. And you know what you do? Here's what you do. Guys, I'm going after one, two, three, four, five. You're going after six. 9, 14, 28. Patrick, you're going to go do this. Vinny, you're going to go do this. And you're going to be like, dude, I got 28. As a matter of fact, I want 28, right? <laughs> Give Can't me wait seven. That no, no, but, but, but yeah. the way this is, is you're playing defense. Dude, yeah. I want to freaking lock him up. I want to guard him. I got him, yeah. right? Where sometimes Michael's like, no, no, no. I'm locking him up. Like the <laughs> yeah. one wants to lock up the one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is that's our job. You know, whoever, when I say our job, whoever's not running, you, you know, that's somebody else. That's your job to go fight for a guy like that. It's the office. Elon Musk, what he did? Freaking 10 out of 10. Go. Dana White, 10 out of 10. Go. But they're not running for office. That office is an office that was held by, you know, Lincoln's room. There's all these other guys that have come before us. There's a level of respect we have to have for those guys. That's all I'm saying. I love the fact that he's capable because when you know someone's capable – you can sit there and say, all right, that guy could cross the line next yeah. time. Okay, I like a yeah. little capability, but you, need, you just need to be a little bit aware. Again, that's my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> did you have a follow-up? You looked like you wanted to ask Kobe something. Well, I think it's a perfect segue for you're talking enemies and who to attack and who not to attack. I just I want to know what happened with Masvidal <laughs> because, I mean, I know you want to go um, you know, fight uh, Leon again. Uh, John Jones, you've had some words with. That's that's a bad man right there, Colby. You know, Dana White, Joe Rogan. You said you'd smack Rogan a little bit. You got a lot going on. That was a long Colby time Covington, yeah. but Masvidal. I'm so in, and so intrigued because I'm a Miami guy. I've seen that guy fighting for years. Uh, back in the Kimbo Slice days, if you, I'm sure you know all about that. Um, you guys had your dust up, poppy steak. Shout out to Groot Hospitality down there in Miami. Those are my boys down there. Obviously, everything that happened there. But what happened, bro? You guys were were friends. You guys lived together. You guys roomed together. He said you slept on his couch for eight months. I'm just using his words. Um, you guys were sort of BFFs. He said you were his mentor. And then, you know, one of you guys chose your enemy. Speaking of choose your enemies wisely. Now he says you're a sellout. He called you a bitch. He's saying all this shit. You guys were on Stephen A. Smith. You, you had the sunglasses on. I'm too pretty. These girls are going to fall in love. What happened with Masvidal? I beat him up. I gave him the 50-43 in a soda. It was the easiest fight of my career. I can't believe they paid me what they paid me to beat that backstabbing bum up. He's a backstabber. He's a guy that, you know, as soon as I started rising up in the ranks, that's when it was an issue. That's when he, his ego came in. He's like, no, fuck you, Colby. I'd fight you for, uh, I'd fight my mom for money, so I'm for sure going to fight you. We're going to fight one day. And, hmm. and then he just... He just started throwing me under the bus for no reason. Like, he just started talking shit in media when we weren't even scheduled to fight yet or even talking about fights. And it's so crazy because, like, gr- we lived together for, like, you know, a couple years. You know, I lived on his wife's couch, Maritza, the the woman that he has two kids with that he doesn't pay child support to because he's a piece of shit deadbeat dad, like I said. So that's why he got offended because I hit the truth. And he had whatever – he could do whatever he wanted to me in that UFC octagon legally for 25 mm-hmm. minutes. He couldn't do shit. That was the easiest fight. I didn't even break a sweat in that fight. I was laughing at the end of it. He had two guys holding him up. Come on, get, get, yeah, like just completely exhausted. The guy's a bum. So, yeah, he had to come outside of that steakhouse in Miami Beach, and he had to stalk me, sit in the bushes, and come and hit me in the back of the head and then knock my tooth out because he hit me in the back of the head, concussed me. He's a, world, he's a world-class fighter, and, you know, he couldn't beat me legally, so he had to do it illegally. And he's a cheap shot artist. How can you respect a, a scumbag like that? Look at his past history. He's stolen cars. Arson, like the guy's a felon, you know, like there's 
multiple things of him saying, you know, oh, fuck Colby and the MAGA movement back in the past, but now he's, you know, best friends with the MAGA, and he, he thinks he's a represent, uh, representative of, of the Republicans. So people see right through him. He's a criminal. He's a slime bag. He's a backstabber. He has an ego. You know, most people in this sport, they have an ego. They can't let their egos to the side. I, I never had a problem with him. He just started throwing me under the bus, and he said, hey, I, I got to hate the people I fight. So it is what it is. Is he at the top of your list, of your, your enemies list? Like, is he the, if there's one guy you're like, dude, I don't even want a paycheck for this. I'll fight for free. Who's at the, is he at the top of the list? I mean, not really. I, I, I've let all, you know, feelings and emotions go with that guy. I could care less about him. I've already handled my business in the UFC. People saw in front of the world what I did to him. You know, I played with him. I was slapping him. I was saying, who's your daddy, bitch? He <laughs> in the fight? In the fight. Straight uh, up. In his ear, I was whispering. He couldn't do anything. I was whispering, letting him know, hey, I'm your big brother. I'm your daddy. Who's your daddy, George? So... I have nothing, you know, he's, I'm levels above him, you know, in, in every sense of the word, you know, politically, uh, s spiritually, in, in the sports world, like, he, he's retired. Why are we even talking about a guy that's not even at the top? I'm still, you know, a top contender in the UFC and, and future champion in this division. So that, you know, now we're talking about a washed up scrub that, you know, had two seconds of fame. He hit lightning in a bottle, and then we're going to talk about him being a good fighter. He's not a good fighter. The guy has double-digit losses on his record. His winning record, he's like a 50% win, winner. He wins one fight, loses a fight, wins a fight. We're talking about him? Like, this guy's a fucking nobody. So, I, you know, I've let my all my emotions and feelings go with that guy because I have nothing else to prove to him. You know, he's, I've already proved that in the octagon. I exposed the piece of shit person he was. He talks about he's MAGA, but he, he had an Ob Obama phone for years. Like, how, how do you believe in, in freedoms, but you're getting food stamps and an Obama phone and you're getting all these government-assisted handouts, but then you're going to preach against it like you stand for conservatism? No, that doesn't make sense. You're a hypocrite. So, you know, people, got, he got exposed, and I exposed him in front of the whole world, and I've moved on from that. It's, it's bigger business, and I got bigger fish to fry. Kobe, who are your friends? Who do you have as friends? Who would you say, like, these are my friends that we have each other's back? Who would you say those are? My best, my, my best friend, you know, is a guy named Charlie Weiss. You know, he's a sergeant of the Miami Beach Police Department. The guy literally saved my life on stage last week, and people don't even realize this. I, I got done doing my interview with Joe Rogan on Friday night after we weighed in. Mm -hmm. It was our last face-off yeah. with Leon, Leon Scott before we were going to fight for the Undisputed title the next day. I get off, and th there were so many people on stage, so it was, like, very crowded. So we were, like, towards the front where Joe Rogan was interviewing me. And I get done with the interview, and I'm like, yeah, this one's for America. And I was just like, the lights are so bright, and all the people were screaming. I, I go to walk off the stage, and freaking Charlie grabs me on the back of my shirt. My next step was going off the platform, because you have the, we had, to, like, I was going to go off the stage right here, but the stairs were over here. Oh, I had to no. go over to the left. No one was looking out for me. No security, nobody. Only Charlie. And this is a guy that's a police officer that, that's, you know, fought for our army, that's been done tours, and, he, and he's an established guy. The guy, most people would be so caught up in that moment that they wouldn't even, they would have let me fall off. I would have broke every bone in my body. It was a nine feet freaking drop. I had to go down damn. 10 stairs. Oh, damn. Yeah, so this is a guy who really cares about me. Doesn't get caught up in the moment. It's truly watching my back at all times like a brother would. And I consider this guy family. I, I would take a bullet for this guy. He's he's blood. He's he's more than family. And, and you know, he's my best friend who, who I else, care about. Who else in the UFC world? Who else in the fighting world? In the fighting world, you know, I, I don't have friends because, you know, I always said, you know, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. And and that's what matters to me is, is financially changing uh, my future and my family's future. I've been able to do things for my family, get them things that they would have never been able to get otherwise. So, you know, everybody's jealous of me. They hate the way I do business, but they're not making the checks I'm making. They're making basic pay, you know, and they'll be broke in a couple years. I'm set for life. Do you I'm think that's the right approach? Do you think you're taking the right approach with relationships? What do you think? Because yeah. to me, uh, uh, you know, I had a guy that I was doing business with. I'll never forget what he told me in Atlanta one time. He says, look, this is how I am, man. I'm going to destroy everybody. I'm going to hate on everybody. I'm going to kill everybody. And then years later, uh, when I'm so far ahead from them, then I'm going to try to be friends with them. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that strategy is going to work. Because at the end of the day, when you're – like even in the NBA, right, like the, my guy's Kobe, mm -hmm. okay? And I've had Kobe on. We've spent time together. I, I just – I relate to Kobe. Kobe went through a phase where, as a villain, I mean, his nickname, right, Black Mamba, after all the stuff that happened with, 
you know, uh, incidents, Colorado stuff that happens. This is how you guys want to do? No problem. And guess who gave him the name Black Mamba? Himself, right? Yeah. Mm. It wasn't like others gave him the name. No, I am the Black Mamba. And then he put a whole persona around it like, you know, Bosworth used to be the nicest guy. I don't know if you've ever seen the Bosworth documentary. If you've never seen I think you would really like it if you've yeah. not seen it. Phenomenal Bos, documentary. It's called Bos, right? You ever seen a documentary? Yeah, Brian Bosworth from Oklahoma. It's him and his yeah. son. It's him and his son, and they're going through the old material, and they're doing it when he's in his late 50s, early 50s type of thing. It's actually it's worth you watching it by yourself without anybody else around, right? Okay. And then all of a sudden, Kobe, Kobe comes into the league, and, you know, in the Olympics, he tells Carmelo Anthony and LeBron, if I come across the center and I see Pau Gasol is putting up a screen, I'm going to run right through him. Have you ever seen this clip or no? I've heard about okay. it. Yeah, he runs right through him as if he's tackling. Can you show it for him but not the audience? So whoever's in the back, don't share the clip. Because I think it's uh, we're gonna get flagged. But who, I want who's Kobe the player? To, who's the player? You've Pau never Gasol. seen Kobe run through Pau Gasol in the Olympics. By the way, no. they were teammates on the this, Lakers. Oh, they're still teammates on the Lakers. Oh yeah, yes. and he runs through him. Boom! I, it <laughs> looks like he, they could have given him a technical foul, kicked him out of the game. That's how bad it was. Pau was on the ground. Is like, what was that all why? about? Right? Why? <laughs> and uh, if you, Spain if is you the can, defending uh, champion. If you can, if you can actually do this instead of doing two point go to one point uh, uh, but just go to the clip. Just fast forward a little bit to the clip. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You're about to see it uh, right there. It's coming up right there. Back up three seconds. Back up three seconds. Right there. No. So watch this. Pow, screen Kobe. Boom. Oh, okay. damn. Yeah. Drops him. And he goes, rocks. And he told people he was going to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, why? Why? <laughs> because Did you just see what he said right before that, though? No. He goes, how close are you guys? He's like, we're like brothers. We're yeah. teammates. So they won an NBA the championship together. So, so the question says, I'm running right through his right. ass. So the question is. You know, when you're in it and, you know, Michael had a relationship, Charles Oakley, he was friends with these guys, right? Eventually, it becomes lonely when you're going through it, especially if the game, if the game you're in. And the older you get, the more you value relationships. Yeah, it's important to make money, of course. Yeah, it's important to have a legacy. Very important. But you, you want to be able to sit there and have friends where you're talking shit to. They can talk shit to you. You can talk shit to them. You're laughing, you're talking about different things, and you can reminisce and go through that. Do you value at a, that at all with people within the space that you've been competing in for all these years? Not within the space because a lot of fighters are very small-minded. They only did fighting because they had no other reason to make an, out, an outlet and a platform. You know, these are the guys that were fighting in backyards, so they just decided to fight. They, you don't see a lot of fighters that have, you know, very good degrees or, or have an education. They're just, all they know how to do is, oh, testosterone, let's fight, you know, and that's never been me. So my friend and my support group is outside the fighting circle. I don't I don't want to have friends in the fighting circle because the people in the fight on, fighting circle, circle, their perspectives are completely different than mine. They don't think the, the way I think. They don't, they don't approach business the way I approach business. So I don't really want to be friends with those. And, and for me, I like to have a disconnect. I, when I'm not fighting, I don't want to be thinking about fighting. I want to talk about politics. I want to talk about life. I want to talk about the future because there's a reason that the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. I I don't want to talk about what happened yesterday or what happened in my title fight. I want to talk about what's going to happen right here in the moment. Yeah, so. I get that. And and and, and uh, again, look, I'm 45. So if I sit down and talk to a guy that's a billionaire and he's 65 and I want to see what he's going to give me feedback wise, I'll entertain it. And it's, it's beneficial to talk to somebody like that. Right. Yeah. So let's say maybe in your world, that would be a Daniel Cormier or because whatever he's like ahead of you. And, and he's one when I say ahead of you age wise, he's ahead of yeah. you in. You know, I don't know how old Daniel is. I'm going to say he's 42. How, how, I would say, how old is he? I would say 40. 40. I would say 41. No, 43, 44. Okay, he, can you just... He fought Stipe when he was 41 44. for the okay, for there you go. Title. Okay, so he's 44 40. years old. So, I, I, you know, when I see uh, the relationship with, you know, Cormier, I see him with Rogan, I see him with Jan, I see him with these guys, guys that are sitting there. You're seeing some of these fighters later on, they're friends, and they're hanging out together and all this stuff. They're, they're, this is a phase of your career, right? So... Snipers sometimes they're loners mm -hmm. in the military. You know the sp sniper mindset; they don't have friends. Yeah. But even a sniper's got a guy laying next to him to saying, "Hey, go do this way. Go do this. Go do that. Go do that. Go do this." Um, you don't process that at all, where you know, uh, uh, some, because dude, you you haven't been one of the guys that fought. 
you're one of the main guys that we've, you know, like that's been in this space that's brought a lot of eyeballs to it. You're not just another UFC fighter. You know, I know you don't think about that yourself. I'm just telling you as a fan side, you're not just another UFC fighter. You're like one of the main names of this brand, right? That, yeah. you know, you, you, all these different Avengers are coming up and different villains and all these roles that they play. But even inside of a villain, man, he's got a heart. You know, the villain is sitting there saying, man, you know, relationships. Some of these guys I've gone to battle with, I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe sitting down and chopping it up with some of these guys. Yeah, you did some shit. I got my stuff on my, you know, because you don't walk on water. Or I don't walk on water. The other dozen person doesn't walk on water. So we can sit here and talk shit to each other. But just as much as you know their dirt, they probably know, I don't know your dirt because I'm not in your world, right? But in my world when we're competing, everybody knows each other's dirt. Everybody yeah. knows, like, what are you talking about? You want me to bring up that story from 2004 and what you did? Like, what are you talking about? Remember that one time you did this? So there's got to be that element as well. <laughs> you don't see the benefit of having any friendships with any of these guys? No. I mean, I have one friendship. I, 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 you know, I was mistaken. You know, the guy that got me into mixed martial arts, a guy by the name of Chael P. Sonnen, mm -hmm. that, that's my mentor in the MMA space. That's my friend in the MMA space. I've gotten a lot of advice from him over the years. Very cool. He got me into fighting originally. He, he was getting ready for the Anderson Silva fights, and he came to my college, Oregon State University. He's like, Colby, I want to wrestle with you, get your pressure, pace, and I want you to help train me for Anderson Silva. So... That was when I got to sit down with him and understand more to this business. It just wasn't just about fighting. There was more. You need to entertain. It's a show business. So, mm -hmm. you know, Chael's done a lot for me. And I still get a lot of advice from him and talk with him on the phone regularly to today. Besides that, my support system consists of doctors, dentists, lawyers, you know, police officers, military personnel. You know, those are my friends. You know, my another one of my best friends, Stephen Hodgson, he was in the 82nd Airborne Unit for the Army Rangers. Now he's uh, with the Golden Knights in the Army. So, you know, these are the people that I look up to. Charlie Weiss at the Miami Beach Police Station. Kirk Weiss, he's a top lawyer for Chick-fil-A. He's one of the top lawyers in the world in Miami. And Ritter and Ramsey, this dentist up in, uh, in Jupiter who did my teeth. Who, you know, these are the type of people that are, that are successful, that understand business and, and more than just fighting, you know. And, th and that's, that's, more, that's what I want. I want disconnect from this fighting world, and I want to have friends that, you know, like you, that, that are bigger than, than larger than life. W were you closer growing up uh, 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 to pops or mom? I was a mama's boy for sure. You were a mama's boy, but close yeah. to both. Close to both, yeah. Okay. My dad got me in wrestling. So. Did, did anybody hardcore, and I'm, I'm not asking for a name, but did, did anybody hardcore ever backstab you or betray you where you're like, you know, you're like Tupac, don't trust no one? Did that ever happen or no? That's not at all the case. Oh, yeah, that's happened a couple times. Okay. And was there one that was above everything where you made a personal truth to yourself? Dude, this is it. My loyalty is only to these people, and no one else gets into that circle. And if you do, it's going to take a lot. Was that kind of like a moment that you had? Yeah. It okay. was about the fighter that he brought up earlier, and I'm not going to say his name anymore because I'm over it, but <clears throat> that was what really was the eye-opener. Someone who I thought was my best friend, who I lived with and was so close but he was willing to throw me under the bus because he cared about his personal gain and, and fame and money more than he cared about his relationship. And yeah, know, that's, that's, that and, and that's between you point. guys. I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse. It's just, I, I wanted to understand you better uh, 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 because I enjoy watching you. I enjoy watching you fight and I've enjoyed what you've done. Thank you. And I wanted to get a better understanding about why you play this villain role, bro. I wanted to see why you play this villain role. <laughs> I don't play a villain role. I, I'm I'm just myself. I turn it up yeah. to eleven. I don't care what people think of me. Yeah. I, people can have their own opinion. I respect everybody's opinion in America, and that's what makes this country so beautiful. Is that we can all have descending and different opinions, but we don't all have to think the same exact thing all the time. So. You know, I respect everybody's opinion. They're entitled to it. Yeah. I'm not going to shame you or throw you under the bus because you have a different opinion than me. I'm, I want you to have your own opinion. I want you to think for yourself. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and you're February 22nd, right? Are you 22nd? Yeah. February 22nd. Interesting. Yeah, very you. interesting, Sharp bro. Sharp memory. Very interesting guy. <laughs> very, very interesting. What can he say about him? Because he's obviously one of the best shit talkers of all oh, time. man. I he started it. Didn't he, 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 he was the initial <laughs> guy. Gangster. That guy, he, he, that's our Oregon gangster, the Westland gangster, mm -hmm. man. You don't want to mess with that guy. You walk around 
the streets of Westland, Oregon, man, the people don't realize how tough he had it, man. That guy's a gangster. There was some years back 20 years ago when his parents only made 100000 a year. Could you imagine having to live off 100000 a year <laughs> 20 years ago? <laughs> you're saying that he had an easy upbringing? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying he had a tough upbringing, man. That's tough, man. That's, that's, that's poverty. Yeah. 100K? That's poverty. <laughs> <laughs> who who in saying, your eyes, who's the best shit talker in the UFC? Is, is, do you have like a list? If you would say uh, top five, who would be on that list? Top five, you know, I like Sean O'Malley. He's got great shit talking these days. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, everybody's just they don't they don't want to open up. They don't want to be judged. They want everybody to look at them in a sympathetic role, like they're the good guy. No one wants to step out and be and be a bad guy and expose the truth. But you know, the truth is what always hurts and stings the worst of these fighters. Not so much the best shit talker. Not so much you know we've asked the hardest puncher, hardest guy. Well, I want to know, like, swag, like, game, like, the biggest pimp type dude. Like, ever, I mean, Usman showed up the other day. He was I mean, chilling. He, he, you got some game, you, you know. You talking about fashion? Like, fashion, style? Fashion. Just like, yeah. a, like, a, like you, know, you know, they say a man's man uh, and also, you know, guy that most guys want to be like but girls want to sleep with, that kind of dude. He's swagged out. He's a pimp. Like, ladies' man, all that. He dresses well, looks good. Who would you put on, like, the – best game kind of a thing right like swag type vibe swag i mean definitely connor he's, he's done some great things you know he's he's one of the biggest fighters of all time if not the biggest and you know he kind of changed the the game you know he, he brought in so many fans that that never watched ufc before so that's that's there's casual fans and then there's hardcore fans mm -hmm. you know if he can he brought in all the casuals so he's got that swag he's done some great things and he might be a future prime minister. I think, you know, he could do some good things for Ireland. You, yeah. you see the people, you know, rotten and burning in the streets, and he's not okay with that. You know, he wants those borders secure, just like we need our borders secure here in America. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know who's coming in, let me, like, that's what's causing all these crime rates to yeah. go up. That's what's causing hundreds of thousands of kids to die from fentanyl every year because these drug lords are coming in. So we need to monitor our borders and, and keep our people uh, free and safe. What's your relationship with Connor? Um, no relationship. You know, I respect his body of work. I think he's done some great things in the space. You know, he's you know the things he did were unmatchable. Knocking out Jose Aldo in seven seconds. You're not ever going to see someone do that in a title fight ever again. So, you know, my uh, my relationship with him is just I respect him, and he's a great fighter. He's done some great things in the sport, and you know, I think he's going to go on to do better things in politics for Ireland. Really, I uh, that would be the most. I would. Prime I, minister. I might move the Ireland. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, imagine, imagine his press conference. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, what the fuck? Yeah. What, what the, the fuck? fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He could uh, say that and get away with it all day long one, because uh, yeah. his brand, they would yeah. love him, right? Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> That's so funny. Because I, I wanted to ask him if it's okay with you. Uh, you were talking about, is that, do you think, Kobe, that one of the main, because I, I believe in it, that one of the main issues that we're dealing with in the Biden administration with uh, Mayorkas, the, the, you know, the Homeland Security, the horrible, horrible little rat, um, <laughs> do you think that's one of our main, our, like, if not the main issue, because I don't know if you saw uh, Governor Abbott of Texas on Monday signed the bill that makes mm. entering Texas illegal, which thank God for and, and it allows police to arrest illegals coming into the state because apparently Homeland Security is not doing nothing. The Border Patrol isn't doing nothing uh, in, uh, in November. Did you know this? Two hundred thousand illegals have come in. It's up two percent from the from the month uh, previous. And think about it. They're not saying nothing. Uh, Kobe, because all those people are coming in are, are future votes. A lot of these exactly. kids are become slaves, uh, trafficked, sex, all that shit. Yep. Um, and did you see this? Stephen A. Smith made a video. And mind you, I'm pr if they're not doing it and people are just running over the border, good. Let the police stop people and, and, and check them out. Stephen A. Smith made a video how he's condemning what uh, Abbott did. If you could play that. Uh, Maybe play okay. the first okay. minute, Rob. Yeah, go ahead. Play, and, play the first and minute. And go to the beginning of it, Rob. Because uh, the, yeah, go ahead. Greg Abbott, you ever heard of him? Yes. Yeah. He's the governor for the state of Texas. Come on, Steve. There's a fake fire on behind Monday, you, Steve. That governor, Governor Abbott, signed a bill into law that will allow the police to arrest migrants illegal into the U.S. <laughs> illegally. <laughs> illegal. This law which takes effect quick? in... Look at I'm curious. I just want to read that. So uh, my English, English, my fifth language, I need your help, <laughs> Go ahead, guys. I got you. Texas bill makes 
illegal <laughs> migration a state crime? Well, isn't illegal immigration a crime already? What are we talking about? Well, what are we talking it about? It has it in the name. It's I, I, like, you illegal. Know how like that, okay, let, let him play a little. I love Stephen A. I love him too. I love, I love Stephen A. I just talked hear, to him a couple days ago. Let's hear him out. Ago. Yeah, that's right. I've seen just him. Talked, no, I just talked to him three days ago. You know, he's like, Colby, I don't agree with your politics, but, you know, I, I agree with what you stand for and, and I respect you for your body of work, but. You know, come on, dude. Everybody knows he's employed by ESPN. They're the biggest, wokest company of Disney. them all. Yeah, <laughs> Disney. So, you know, of course he's got to say that because if he doesn't, then his sign, his checks aren't going to get signed. So he's just doing that. He doesn't really believe that. He's just doing that to appease his, you know. His I employers. agree. And, and, and here's what does the he thing. say here? Well, well, uh, well, he just says, so you, that means. Uh, you know, he called it racist. He says it's racist. He says, it's, he says and, Governor Abbott is racist. He, and he goes, he's racist. It's a racist thing, which, dude, I'm tired. Like, you you nailed it. it. Well, I mean, it's five, five the minutes. video's five oh, minutes gotcha. long, but I'll break it down. He says it's racist. And he's like, so that means if a cop sees a Latin looking person, they could go and grab him. I'm going to, like, Stephen A. Smith, stick to sports, bro, because you know what? He's from New York. I'm from New York. Go to New York and ask New Yorkers how they feel about all these uh, illegals that are just bust over there and flown over there and how it's going. At, go ask Eric uh, Adams how is it going yeah. because Texas can't. Dude, there. Have you been? Have you seen the border? Have you seen what's happening? And it's like nobody cares. And I'm tired of this. It's Rob, racist. Can you pull up the clip of the border because it was a record breaking day yesterday. You know how many people yesterday? Twelve five. Wow. Twelve thousand five hundred a single day crossed the border. Texas? And by the way, you know what that is times three sixty five. Record breaking four and a half. It was a record breaking day yesterday, and we did nothing. Wow. Four and a half million a year if they allowed. They were interviewing who was coming across. Look at that. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. This is yesterday. That's it. not. That's this is not a. What do you call it? Was it was a soccer game, and somebody no, it's won. Not a soccer game. No. And oh, and and then and Adam, before you go, and here's my point, and and this is this really bothered me, Rob, and I sent the clip to Rob. They don't give a shit. Who's coming in and what's happening? Rob, I saw I saw a video that really pissed me off. There's some guys from Guatemala. They're coming over the border, and a, another Latin guy stops them and questions them about the kid who looks like he's drugged. Play this video. Look, they don't even know. That's not their kid. Watch. Put the, can you put the volume up? Hola. Watch. Watch this. Wake him up. Wake him up. Look. That kid, look. Look. He was sleeping. Watch this. ¿A qué estado te diriges? ¿De dónde vienes? De Guatemala. De Guatemala. ¿Qué estado vas? A Denver, Colorado. ¿Qué viene el niño solo? ¿Y la mamá? No, yo soy el papá. Pero ¿por dónde está la mamá? ¿Cuántos años tiene el niño? Año y medio. ¿Y cuándo nació? Él nació el 29 de junio. ¿De qué año? What year? Del doesn't know the year of, of, of the kid that it's his kid. That's not his kid. And the kid's one years old. Dude, the Just kids say the drunk. year prior, No, no, buddy. okay. And then here's my point. And then, and then another one. This dude, guys, this is what we're dealing with. This is one case, Adam. And then Rob has another video. Now, in Texas, Valley Airport, the, now there's, there's underage migrants coming in. Look at how they're all in cahoots with Border Patrol. Watch this. Moving these kids, too. Where you, what? Do you guys got paperwork for these kids? Don't worry about it. You know what third of these kids go missing? Don't worry about it. Look at this dog. Yeah. You guys know it's anything about this? About, yeah, it every day. Look, about these look, guys look moving these kids through the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Look, straight up. It's America. It's America. It's America. What is that? That's not America. Yo, that's America. Yo, you you can stop it, Rob. And so my, my point is, Adam. I get it. What's going on here? So th these kids are coming in with, and with these th these sponsors, yeah. just coming in. No, just they're and where are these kids going? There's no spot. They're, they're going to be put in. Well, they're going to house them. They're going to house, house them. They're, they're going to give them money while, while our veterans and did, did you you see? Know, rot in the streets. And when they disappear, nobody's keeping track of the lost kids. And this is just nope. one case. And the guy, the border patrol, is like, yeah, yeah, just yeah, that's how so we go. I'm, I'm going to add something to to what you're saying. So you know, we were just at Turning Point USA. We interviewed James O'Keefe, our buddy. Shout out to you, James. Yeah. Uh, he threw a party the next night. He, we we missed it, but we'll yeah. do it again it soon. Is what it is. But him. And my friend Ashley St. Clair, who, who was also there, they broke one of the biggest stories yesterday. They had a massive uh, Twitter uh, X space yesterday about what's going on at the Phoenix airport, where um, they saw these uh, migrants being bussed in, right? They got dropped off at the airport by, James was going in on it, yeah. by black limo service. Weird. Right? Here it is right here by like, you know. VIP type buses, and he basically starts asking, "What's going on here? Where are these guys going? What's going on?" 
They all end up going to the airport. They're all flying to New York. Ashley was flying from, New York. Air, from Phoenix to New York. It was a whole thing. Migrants on the plane. They're getting taken from the border, black limo service, getting sent to these sanctuary cities. This is New York. And then on Twitter last night, or X, they had all the pilots. Basically, half of them had to disguise their voice. Yeah. And they're like, just what's going on? You know, just get to the point here. They're like, dude, where are the pilots of these planes? And like, we don't know who the hell these people are. We I don't know who these kids are. Pat, why? We don't know why? what's going what's on. The you know what they use as ID? They don't even have an ID. Their arrest records. So Shut there's basic up. people that are just basically saying, maybe go to Ashley St. Saint Clair's Saint on, um, let me play her video. Um, the people just basically like, guys, what's going on here? You know what's going Open on. Open borders. Yeah. Just flying them across the country, busting them here, sanctuary city there. This is Ashley right here. If you want to play this, it's 30 seconds. A lot of migrants who are also boarding Dude. this flight that the U.S. taxpayers are paying for. This is what the U.S. taxpayers are paying for right here. Premium seats on Delta <laughs> that they have people coming here. We're paying for this, shipping them out to New York City because guess what? Everywhere else is at capacity. So they have these sanctuary cities like New York that they're now shipping these migrants to that we're all paying for. Why though? I, 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 I'm going to go off because I've said this before too. It's uh, first, I think it's votes all over the place. But when you're not keeping track, there's no ID. When they're young and they're whatever, A, they're going to be used for cheap ass labor. And I'm going to be honest with you. Sex trafficking and all that, that it, it's, an, it's a constant mm -hmm. influx. And that's why the left is like, no, we're humanitarians. Let them in. No, 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 no. You have to keep the, the, the supply open. There's no other excuse. Give me another excuse. G give me one. Kobe, Terrorists, what do you think? Why do you think? Come on, dude. I mean, he's definitely on to something with the the sex trafficking. Yeah. You know, if you saw that movie uh, Sound uh, of Freedom, of mm -hmm. it showed all the the, the nasty, uh, vile things that are happening to these kids. And, you know, obviously we all know about Epstein Island. All these left uh, elites were flying to this island regularly to to be with little kids. So, you know, they're about to release those, those flight logs and, and a lot of people are getting exposed. So... I think that's a there's a legit pedophile ring in, in DC, and you know why not get little migrants from all around the world that they can just abuse. You know what's going to happen though. Whoever gets elected next, there there's going to be deporting going on. Like the 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 amount of people that came illegally, you, the conversation is about what you're going to do to deport guys. They're openly having conversations right now about that. And FYI, like if you lose Texas. If to, I understand strategically if you're allowing these people into Texas because that makes sense because you got to you got to turn Texas blue. Texas is the biggest pain in the ass for liberals. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally and, get and it. And it's purple. It was deep red. Now it's purple. No, Texas. now it's purple. Yes. Now it's purple. <laughs> Texas, way, you lose Texas. That's what, 30 here's electoral what's crazy. votes? Texas becomes purple. And, and Florida becomes red, which is kind of weird. You know, not fully red, but, yeah. you know, in the way of being red, right? But why would you move them to New York? It's not like New York needs more liberals there. What are you doing moving them to New York? I mean, you're not winning anything with that. So strategically, I understand Arizona. Fine. I get it. You have some annoying people that are there for the left. They can't stand a carry lake. I understand Texas. Yeah, totally get it. You want to get rid of uh, you know, what uh, uh, Abbott is doing and what some of the other guys. Oh, moving them to blue cities? Intention? Don't know. And they're not saying nothing about it. Weird. It's just happening. Isn't that weird? Nothing about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, again, this will be more of a reason because there are certain issues, uh, Vinny, that unifies the entire party. For example, th not the entire party, the entire country. You may be pro-life, okay, and she may be pro-choice, right? <clears throat> and whatever. You can make the argument for pro-life, pro-choice. You know what the midterms showed last year? Majority of America are pro-choice. You can be pro-life all you want. Midterm showed. Majority of America is pro-choice. So guess what, Republicans? You screwed up, okay? Oh, shit. Okay, we paid a price. Should have been a red wave. Didn't get a red wave. Mm -hmm. Now, liberals may be saying, oh, I bet everybody wants more, Demo more people to come down the border. No. Even Democrats living in those cities raising kids don't want open borders, okay? That's the part where America is against open borders. Hey, Everybody should be okay with us teaching LGBTQ stuff in school. No, not everybody is. Parents are on the same side with this. 2024 election, if there's no game, game, gamesmanship and no manipulation, 
it's going to be a it's going to be it's going to be a landslide if there's no gamesmanship. The only way there won't be a landslide is because there's gamesmanship. Because the entire America doesn't stand for this stuff. <laughs> Dems don't stand for this stuff. The people yeah. on the left don't stand for this. John stuff. Fetterman I was have out one there of my, talking yeah, about Yeah, I'm this. not a progressive. Exactly. Yeah, I'm at the insurance. We're having dinner. You know who was at the dinner at the main table? Don't say the names, but you know who was sitting at the yeah, table with you and I, right? At the diplomat, you're saying. At the diplomat, yeah, 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 at yeah. the prime. So we're sitting there, okay? One of the guys sitting next to him, he's a very good friend of mine. Love this guy. But he's a, he's a liberal. He can't stand Trump. He cannot stand Trump, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a liberal. And he went to all the right schools, okay? Mm-hmm. He has all the right GPAs. When I say right schools, I mean like the Ivy League type of schools, like yeah. all that stuff, right? And he guess where he lives? He lives in, in New York, Greenwich, right? Connecticut, oh, Greenwich. you know, the most has expensive a house place. in Sag yeah. Harbor, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he's saying, look, man, I'm not going to lie to you. What The way the liberal, the left is handling the Jewish community, I don't know. It's making me want to consider voting the other side for the first time in my life. There's so many dumb strategies that the left is playing that they think they 100% have loyalty of everybody on the left, and they don't. I'm convinced they don't, and I think they're going to show it at 2024. I believe that. But again, we'll see. And they're going to play all these games they're going to play. It is what it is. Kobe, it's been a blast having you on, man. Thanks really, for really enjoy talking to you. Appreciate Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you having me. And uh, uh, gang, I am, we, we're not doing any podcast. Today is what, the 21st? The next time we do another podcast will be in 2020. Four. No, means, PBD. Yes. <laughs> I no, want to wish, wish all you guys a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and may 2024 be the beginning of the greatest years of your life. God bless everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.